since remember me and i just want to say thank you for all the things that you've done for me i prove to you how much i love you because to serve you is my destiny all my life yeah all my life i did wrong to you oh i did you wrong yeah i know i did you wrong and i'm sorry for I'm sorry 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 the things sorry i told you do. And I feel I don't deserve this. I just don't deserve this. I just don't deserve. And I feel I don't deserve this. I just don't deserve this. I just don't deserve. Sorry, 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 sorry for. Sorry, 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 sorry for And I feel like I don't deserve this no, no. I just don't deserve no, this no, no, I just no. don't deserve And I feel like I don't deserve this no, no, I just don't deserve no, no. this no, no. Out of the area, well, well, man, I fight up from the start. I mean, no carry grudging on the art. Here, treat me, get turned by your people. Wise up, my baby, smart. DJ, turn up the lights on the start. Ring tune, pull it up, celebrate us. We no carry grudging on the art. Mm, we no carry grudging on the art. Everybody feel right, right. Good vibes in any place all night. We don't carry grudge, we people We not have time for your study, no evil Don't make them catch up with the bad energy Smiling on your face, but me, I tell you, them are enemy How oh, many times you try to cure them I we cut them out, that's the only remedy Everybody go through things We not perfect, so we not do the blame game thing Know this trial's gonna come one day I we endure, adapt me and sing any function must clean, then step out, peel out, jump in a car, tire, screech out, screech out, GPS it up, it put in the road, dream team, touch the scene, everybody scream out. Wait up, turn up the eyes on the start, ring tune, pull it up, celebrate cars, we not carry grudge in the arm, mm, we not carry grudge in the arm. DJ, turn up the eyes on the start, ring tune, pull it up, celebrate cars, we not carry grudge in the arm. This near them, as they call us, give me the ring. And a long time on, tell us that they will them off fear. Them can hold me down, cause it's a party night. Good vibes in the air, don't have me feeling right. But about no hypocrite, but about no parasite. Them not show themselves for day, but them come out of mind. Them a vampire, I run from the light. Them just remember every day, them spirit no right. Them a cup of evil, too much higher time. But what forever in a dark of it coming on. Turn up the lights on the start. Ring tune, pull it up, celebrate cars. We no carry grudge in the arm. Mm, we no carry grudge in the arm. Turn up the lights on the start. Ring tune, pull it up, celebrate cars. We no carry grudge in the arm. Mm, we no carry grudge in the arm. Nobody's not really smiling at me. 
me face, me realize. Try give me the strength, me see they might be spiritualized. It's still like enduring all this struggle when the pressure rise. Man, I feel you so lean, I dig it, I'm gonna stay alive. No sweat and tears, endure self-sacrifice. Still not give up, can make my rest for the price. Try give me strength, feel you back up, man. Yeah, treat them full of jealousy. Man, so to the thing we not be a queen of counterfeit. I know for them what they mean, what them full of shit. Be perfect, Israel never quit. After be heard in the fire, so me tell you this. Man, so to the thing we not be a queen of counterfeit. I know for them what they mean, what them full of shit. Be perfect, Israel never quit. After be heard in the fire, so me tell you this. Yeah. Don't be lying from the start. Ring tune, pull it up, celebrate, cause. We no carry God in our the arm. Mm. We no carry God in our the arm. Tell your DJ, turn up the lights from the start. Ring tune, pull it up, celebrate, cause we no carry God in our the arm. Mm. We no carry God in our the arm.
your show now, press 1 to hear important instructions. Your show is scheduled to start in 34 seconds. This is blacker than cold, but can't deny my soul. The nation's playing their part because they fit the role. Hit me, sit, man, I'm lifting, stand on my tippy toes. Christ return, you in danger, my name ain't Mr. Cole. Cause I don't know no limit, the silk on this garment will shock it. Romeo P. Miller, a doctor and doctor got the pill. I see my folks need healing like Dragon Balls. My people Your scatter, go, go live in five the seconds. Water, hope, Four, but don't put in dope. three, Frankincense two, smoke. Precept one. Or precept. Remember they hunger. It's that time again. Yeah. De la hora. You know, power hour. Uh. Pon, ponle atención. Class is in session. Tune in for an hour, maybe more. That's a blessing. Learn from the captains and the leadership. Bleed from religion, cause them churches never teach them shit. Everything you learn for your benefit. Line upon line is a requisite. Never take a deficit. Yeah, that mean you take a loss if you stray from the way. You get the understanding if you study every day. Apply what you learn and bless when you pray. It's one interpretation, man. It's same what it's saying. Ya vení el tiempo. Entra para el templo. Aprende del maestro con talento. La Biblia es el centro. Usando a Israel como instrumento. No te pierdas en doctrina como viento. Estudia y ora y aplica. Tiempo para Dios. Ven, hace una cita. Escritura dinamita. Morenos y hispanos y salita. Oye cómo explica Israel unido en Cristo para la vida. Nunca se divida. Tune in, it's the power hour. Learn your family history, don't be a coward. Yeah, tune in, it's the power hour. I said, learn your family history, don't be a coward. Yeah, history is the word. It's the power hour. The eleven hour. Tune in to your history. Shalom, shalom. Welcome to the Power Hour Plus Edition. I'm Captain Ya... Oh, Captain, I keep saying that thing. I'm Deacon Yashua. <laughs> Officer Shai. <laughs> Officer Tobias. <laughs> it's going to take a little bit. Oh, gosh. It's because it's been for so long. How long were you, Captain? Eight years, I think. Wow, all prizes. Yeah. It's, it's going to take a while. Yeah, it will. <laughs> yeah. It will. Even on a... D- Daily basis, me and my wife be like, "Yeah, Captain, no, Deacon," <laughs> and then she corrects me, and I correct her. So, oh, all praise the most. I know, man. I know. Yeah. The leadership too. They'll be like, "Captain," I'll be like, "Oh, damn, I'm sorry, Deacon. Like, it's all right. I get it." it took me a long time for Bishop Yawasab to like, mm. make sure I was saying Bishop and That's not Deacon. Right? Yeah. yeah, just it was eventual. Like, yeah, eventually. I guess we just get so casual with it. Mm. You know, I'm getting used to hearing it though. Okay. Like the first, like the first few weeks, it was like weird. Mm. But I guess I'm getting used to hearing it now. All praise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we back, we back. There's so much going on. I wasn't sure where I wanted to go with the show. Man, you you got some fire coming out tonight. I don't know. We'll see. Lois will. <laughs> <laughs> Lois will. We'll see if y'all talk. What do you mean if y'all talk? You're supposed to be like co-host. I got you. Uh huh. You want me to talk right now? Nah, I'm just kidding. (laughs) You know, y'all got to bring it out as we bring it out. We got to talk. Yeah. Mm. I got you. I I, I got the... I've been trying to go over this stuff with Gad for like the longest. Yeah. But different things have been coming out. Um, So like I didn't even bother like to like actually prepare like notes and stuff because it just hasn't been going that way. Mm. So I said, we're we're just going to talk. Yeah. Mm. Well, it's because the get stuff, it's like, we got to go into history, we got to go into... No, but it's like, we haven't had time, because other stuff has been coming up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's not that I don't want, I haven't wanted to. I've had it queued up, like, every show for the past few weeks. Right. Just haven't been able to... Get to it. Really touch on it. Mm. I know, so it's like... Eesh. It's the way the spirit be moving. Right. That's exactly yeah. what it is. All right. That's exactly what it is. And then, and then we got this abortion stuff, the Roe v. Wade stuff, right? Mm-mm-mm. Going mm. on. And uh, I've been having a lot of thoughts in my spirit about uh, maybe for the next time I teach 
a particular topic to go over in regards to marriage. Um, some of it will be, you know, those marriage classes are necessary. Some of it will be like the marriage stuff that needs to come out. To that that that's I don't want to say always, but that you know is continually edifying to come out. Mm. But then just kind of a different perspective. I just think I don't know, man. I feel like lately the stuff I see going on in in the earth, like it really is vexing my spirit more than usual. Like every, if I see the transgender stuff, right? That's one thing. The stuff with the abortion. Um, the hell is this? Like, I'm becoming more sensitive to, like, all types of lewdness that's out there. Like, so, like, if I see something, like, you know, just uh. people talking about so cavalier about relationships and things like mm. that. Like, it's really, it's, like, really bothering mm. me. Maybe because they took it to another level. It's been taken I just, to another I, level. I, yeah, that's what I think it is. And I just think there's just such a disregard for for her. How, how things are supposed to be so so like so like when i do the marriage stuff it's just like i don't know and I, I even see it continually in israel just like you know people not i don't think people people are looking at marriage for the right reasons or the right motivations they're right. not they're not despite mm. despite what we bring out scripturally so but that'll be something laws will like i said i haven't i have thoughts i haven't had like i haven't really taken it to notes yet yeah but this kind of goes with that too because we're going to talk about the whole uh Right to choose is what they say. Mm. The mm-hmm. right to choose. Hey, uh, you know how it's, 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 they took it to another level, and now it's just it's it's become a a part of society. A year ago, it was like slight two, three years ago, it was just slightly pushing it in, mm-hmm. and now it's just normal. And they're making it the norm. I just, I just think, I just think the world at large is numb. Mm-hmm. To what's going on, and 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 I think it's tragic, and and it vexes my spirit to like no end. I uh, so they sent me to a new job site today, and um, my boss or the guy that I report to, pretty much, uh, he's an older uh, white man, Caucasian mm-hmm. man, mm-hmm. in his forties, probably, and um, I'm talking to him. Yeah, what's going on? Look, this and that, and I look at his vest, and he has a badge or like a little pin. With the rainbow saying love is love. So now it's openly even in construction. Construction's wicked. The people there, the 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 brothers, the men, the mindset of the men in construction, it's wicked as hell. You go into the Port of Johns and it's like, bro, this is all you guys think of, right? Uh penises and and like that, that's all like written all over. All over. Like that. Yeah, it's not love is love, it's lust is lust. That's exactly what it is. Yeah, and I so, think that, I think that's where I'm feeling like real disgusted these days. Yeah, because like, just it's just, it's, it's really just this. I mean, that's a sign of decadence of a society, though, mm-hmm. man. You know, like they just it's just so much lewdness, and you know, like you said, everybody's just so it's just numb to carnal. it. Carnal. Everybody's just so upset with like, oh yeah, yeah, you know, I just want to feel good. That's it. Mm-hmm. That's basically what it boils down to. Yeah. You know, and there's this guise of morals and principles and things right. like that. And then I think the more the more principled you are, and and us following God's law, statutes, and commandments make us very principled. Um, really, just winds up making you see even more, kind of what's going on out there, and and, I and can how and how and how it messes with your spirit. And I can prove that because I was at orientation, and they were telling me, or they're telling all of us that were in that room. They said, guys. We do not tolerate tolerate harassment. So be mindful what you say to certain people because even the guy, he, I think he was Northern Kingdom, um, he was saying, be mindful what you say because we live in a society today where everybody's feelings get hurt. So he said, we don't tol- uh, tolerate harassment of any kind and just be mindful what you say at the work area. So I was like, yeah. Where they can go into work and Happy Mother's Day, Happy Mother's all Day, all that Happy Mother's Happy Day. Easter. Not only that, bro, it's just like Merry Christmas. The sodomy act. Uh, I don't want to say actions, but just the sodomy horseplay at in construction. Because right, I'm right. in that zone. It's just nasty, wicked. You go into the Porta Johns and then you read. Uh, I don't even. I know what you mean. And you talk about it's not even just sodomy, just in general. Like sexual uh, conversations is just yeah, it's just out there. Yeah, no, but you go into the Porter Johns, bro, and it's like just you go and I think Bishop Yawasa brought it down one of his classes. He said, um, 
you go into these restrooms and the mindset of people, you see it on the wall because all they think about or all they write and or draw is penises mm-hmm. of men. Of men that go into the porta johns with the Sharpie and start drawing penises. That's what right. I'm saying. It's just lewdness all around. Mm-hmm. It's just lewdness all around. Let me get this Ezekiel 9 and 4. I was thinking of this as we're talking about this. See, I talk. <laughs> Oh praises! Uh, I mean, you know, I just I gotta remind I gotta remind y'all. I'm kidding. You know, I gotta remind y'all to speak up. Ezekiel nine and four. The book of Ezekiel, chapter nine and verse four. Bring and the out. Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem. Right. So I mean, we see it in the earth, and there's an expectation that for the other nations, that's that's a norm for them. Mm-hmm. But it's it's so polluted our people, and then knowing that we're a holy seed, yeah, there's a there's a set number that's basically set for destruction you know we understand that but it's even more vexing when you see it amongst us right so he's saying and go through the midst of jerusalem come on and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof and i think that's kind of that what 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 i've been feeling lately as i see stuff Mm -hmm. like going on like in in the in the media in the world at large Especially pertaining to our people, it's I'm not I'm not there crying, but it's a lot of sighing right. as I see this stuff, and it's vexing to the spirit. And uh, you know, I, I it's um, it, well, let's read on, and you'll see. Come on, verse five. And to the others he said, "In mine hearing, go ye after him through the city, and smite." Let not your eyes spare, neither have neither have ye pity. He's saying basically, if, if the ones that it don't vex your spirit, that you're actually numb to it, that it doesn't have you sighing and crying over what's going on, death and destruction is in store for them. Come on. Slay utterly, old and young, both maids and little children. So it's what he was talking about, even little kids, right? It's just overly sexualized and all this type mm. of stuff. It's like, man, where the hell is this information coming from? Right. And 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 how are, they, how are they so polluted in this way? Hey, there's going to be a time. You got to realize that. It's not just grown folk amongst our people that are going to be destroyed Damn. if they don't get their spirit right. Right. It's going to be those little children as well. Bishop Nathaniel was bringing out in Matthew how it said this uh, this same generation, right? This mm-hmm. wicked generation that's here. Mm-hmm. Some of that's children. Some of that's those spirits that's in those evil little kids that are in the midst of all type of lewdness. Wade, the basketball player, his son. Dwayne Wade. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's a big example of the little mm-hmm. children that are going to be slain. Yeah, that are going to have to be slain yeah. if they don't yeah. repent. Yeah, exactly. exactly. If they don't repent. If they don't repent. Man, and then I'm seeing how we started this church blitzes, man. And these churches is talking smack, talking about, man, I saw one. They was, <laughs> he said, he said, he going to win over. He said, y'all come back out. I forgot, I'm, I forgot where. I was reading it in the captain's group. He said, y'all come back out to my church. I've been praying and meditating on this. He goes, and I'm going to take y'all to the Burger King behind the church, and I'm going to buy y'all food because, you know. uh, (laughs) For what? He says, uh, if your enemies are hungered, feed him and all this. So he said, said, yes. So he said he's going to take the brothers to Burger King. Wow. And he's going to. I get a Whopper with cheese. And he's going to win some of them to white Jesus. (laughs) He didn't say white Jesus. He said Christ, but we know who he's talking about. Right. right. He said, we're going to win some of you to white Jesus. Mm. Wow. Hey, Deacon. Yeah. So to this past Sunday, when we pulled up, mm-hmm. we didn't even finish unloading before we were threatened with the police. Yeah. Like, we, we didn't even get the stuff off of the truck yet. Yeah. Hey, that's how they rolling. That's crazy. That's how they rolling. Hey, and we knew it was prophesied that they would do that, right? right? And, that they would and, go and into the gates of the you've ever seen the movie nobles. Life, he was kind of like that... Uh, like the uh, assistant security guard on the movie Life. Oh, with, damn. He was just like him. He literally had an Edomite with him and everything. Damn, wow. damn, damn. That's like Steven from Django. Those are the Stevens. Damn. Mm. Those are the yeah. Stevens from Django. Steven, that's Samuel Jackson's yep. character. Okay. That 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 he that he he basically was all up masters behind Who's trying to get him. To... That name? Right. Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Right. So read, read verse six again. Verse six. Slay utterly old and young both maids and little children and women, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark. Meaning those that are vexed by these things. So you got these Christian pastors. This is another layer that's just been adding to my vexation lately. And man, the smack that they talking, he talking about, uh, you know, we've had men come out of different lives and this and that. And now they driving 40, 50 and $60,000 cars. You saw their vehicles drop off. That's your measure. 
and fullness and stature of Christ that you came out of one wickedness to go into another that seemingly seems clean? Outside seems clean. And your measure of the worth is that because they roll in in, in, in fifty, sixty thousand dollar vehicles. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Christianity being the bloodiest religion that's ever existed. Mm. That so much in the name of that white Jesus has been done, not just to our people, but to people in general under the guise of that. Right. What does uh, Bishop Yalsop call it? Uh, he calls it the, 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 crack the crack house. Yeah, the crack house. Mm. Christian yeah. church. The mm. Christian churches call them the crack houses. Yeah. Methadone clinic. Brothers went today in Jackson to a uh, stop the violence rally. And the police and the sheriff's department and some of the churches said, hey, yes, come on, we want you to speak. Three scriptures in, the the... The Israelite big mama comes up wow. talking about my, my son was killed. I don't want no more. Vi Your son was killed because of the lack of these laws, statutes and commandments, because of the lack of the love for your brother, loving your neighbor as yourself. Things that Christianity supposedly teaches. Right. But none of that stuff going nowhere. Can I get a scripture? Go ahead. Matthew 6. Well, finish finish this verse uh, uh, quick, and then go to Matthew 6. Finish this in, in Ezekiel 9 and 6. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 9, verse 6. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark, and begin at my sanctuary. You got to start with Israel. That's why we're going out to these churches. That's why we're going out to these areas that we go out to. It says, but begin at my sanctuary. Come on. Then they begin... Then they began at the ancient men which were before the house. And not just at the sanctuary, but you got to go to those top people. You got to go to those people that are supposedly providing answers to our people, but we know that it's more poison. Right. So that's why we hit in these churches and we blitz in these churches. Because that's the chief crack house. That's the chief who house. Right, right. Under the guise of Christianity and love is love. So like I said, just lately, I've just been feeling real like, like just vexed, just sighing and crying for all the about because Christianity is an abomination to our people. It's poison to our people. The biggest abomination to our people. And then just everything else that you see in the whole, all the pollutions of this earth, just just permeating through our people. Mm -hmm. You know. Go ahead, go go with what you want to go with. Uh, Matthew six and thirty some. Seek ye the kingdom. Seek ye the kingdom. Just cause, bro. Really? That's uh. It's just it just. It oh, gender neutral bathroom. That's another one. I forgot when was it when I was traveling to New York. I don't know if it was at the airport or whatever. And you saw it? She said gender neutral. I was like, man. I said, uh, he wow. she better not walk up in here. <laughs> the hell is this? Get that. Get that. Hell no. Hey, I saw something the other day. They said now in the boys' bathrooms they're going to put uh, uh, tampons women, in women's the schools. Products, women's women's products. products. What? Yeah. Like yeah, maxi pads this. and and yeah. tampons and. Like sanitary napkins. Bruh. I know I'm saying the brand wow. new. Those are brand like sanitary napkins for 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 in the boys' room. Come mm. on, man. Because of the transgender thing. Oh mm. my goodness. I mean, that means they're gonna be condoms, and you know how like they say like some yeah. of the bad. That means there be condoms in the in the women's room and. Right. That's well, yeah. Mm. In the schools, they already give condoms and stuff here. Well, I remember when they when that was a big thing in New right. York. They even said New York City. They said I love New York. <laughs> The condoms. No. This was like, yeah, this was like in the 90s when I was in high school. I remember it was a bit. It wow. Was, it, it, and at that time, there was still a little bit of morals around. So there was like some controversy around it. I, I remember York. distinctly. Yeah. And you would go to your guidance counselor and they would and they would give you however many condoms you wanted. <laughs> That's wild. Said, and they said, you know, the I love New York. Yeah, thing? yeah, yeah. It was like that. The condom wrapper was black. New and it had the I love New York, I heart New York on the condoms. That's crazy. This is where <laughs> That's like encouraging fornication. Like That's exactly what it is. At a young age here. That's exactly <laughs> what it is. Because, you know, on twenty on $20 um, a week allowance, you know, I mean, yes, $20 in the 90s would probably get you through the whole week as a kid. You know, mm -hmm. little snacks or whatever you got. You know, I didn't have money to buy no condoms. So when they started giving them for free, it was like, well, said, oh, hey, what's up? What's up? Let me go hit the guidance counselor and get the free condoms. <laughs> right. See, I've been, uh, I've been itching. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, bro. Wow. In New York. No, and that's if you were using condoms. Right. right? Because there's some people, I mean, oh, man. Well, we'll talk about that when we get to this choice. All righty then. This pro-choice stuff. But go ahead, bring out what you're going to bring out. <laughs> Matthew 6. The book of St. Matthew, chapter 6, verse 33. Just, just yeah. from that pastor that said, uh, people came out of walks of life, and now they're writing $60,000 cards. Let's see what the Bible says. 
Damn, Christian pastor. Book of St. Matthew 6, verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. No, seek ye the kingdom of God and the materialistic things of this world. And his righteousness. The righteousness is thou shalt not kill. So that's why there's, uh, you got your, uh, 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 what's his name? Um, the brother that was need. Uh, what are you the, talking about? The brother that was put his. They George put, Floyd. Thank you. Mm. That's why you have that. Thou shalt not kill. Love your neighbor as yourself. Your sisters that uh, uh, are not out there looking like hoes at the Christian church. That's what it's, it's going into. Not seek ye materialistic stuff. Not seek ye the riches of this world. Read it again. But seek ye first the kingdom of God mm -hmm. and his righteousness. Mm -hmm. And all these things shall be added unto you. And when you go to Proverbs chapter 30, it tells you the Lord is going to give you sufficient for you. Not too much, not too little. So it's not it's not seek ye the kingdom of heaven of white Jesus and the materialistic things of this world, but it's seek, seek ye the kingdom of God of your people ruling and them keeping the commandments, loving your neighbor as yourself and loving God uh, above all things. Right. Uh, let me get uh, give me Deuteronomy six twenty five for his righteousness. Because in, in what you just read, in, you and Matthew, right? Yes, it sir. says his righteousness. Seek his right. Not yours. Right. Dang. Right? Yep. Not yours. Seek his righteousness. <laughs> Go ahead. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 25. Freedom! And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God, as he hath commanded as us. As he hath right. commanded us. So our righteousness needs to be based on God's righteousness. Right. And the Christian church doesn't do that for you. Nothing out there does that for you. And and you know you know what that's it, it's so heavy that in Matthew he says seek his righteousness because he knows the spirit of our people. Mm -hmm. He knows the spirit of our people that we would what we would be there saying oh but you know I don't think God. Would, and that's that philosophy piece that Christianity yes. has in our mind. Remember when I said seminary theology? Yep. It's supposed to be taught that way because it put, it makes you philosophical instead of, yes, this is right and this is wrong. Making it plain. It Yeah, it makes it plain. But, it, but Christianity and all these other things that are out there, they make it gray. And they say, oh, well, you know, yeah, I don't think God's going to destroy me for wearing certain attire. Right. I don't think, I think he's more concerned with this. I think he's more concerned with that. So he says, look, you guys are going to have your own inventions. You're going to create your own things to try to justify your evil. Mm. He says, you got to seek his righteousness because we would try to call what's unclean, clean. Right. right. We would try to call what's crooked straight. Right. The Bible says, let every man be a liar and God is true. Right. Let every man be a liar and God true. Right. Meaning you're going to try to come up with your own thoughts of what's right. You're going to try to come up with your own thoughts of what's righteousness. He says you got to seek his righteousness. We Deuteronomy 6.25 again. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 25. Freedom. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he hath commanded us. Right. So he says his commandments. Mm -hmm. That will be what our righteousness is. That is what we should focus on. Right. You, uh, One of you was looking for something. You're going to bring something out? I was trying to find something, but I, I can't figure out where it's at. What was it? I was, maybe we're on the same page. Um, Where you go to establish your own righteousness. I think it's like Colossians. Uh, I think I know what you're talking about. In the meantime, let me get uh 2 Timothy 3 and 1. Because this goes with the same thing how Matthew, why he said, you got to seek his righteousness. Come on. Give me one second. Sorry. The book of 2 Timothy, chapter 3, verse 1. Freedom! This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Right. So these are those perilous times. Why? Because it's going to be more and more prevalent, the seducing spirits, right? Like you read in 1 Timothy 4 and 1. You're going to have more of those seducing spirits, meaning it's going to be subtle and it's going to rein you in. We can, None of us can think that. Remember, the scripture says evil communication corrupts good manners. Right. The good manners is not going into holding the door for someone saying, thank you, you're welcome. It's talking about his righteousness, keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. And it says that evil communication. And we live in the world, they call it the information age. Mm -hmm. But it's really the evil communication age, the, the corruption age, where it's just so much more prevalent. And it's everywhere. And the placement of it, for the sake of equality, is what they say, is in everything. From children's car. You know, it used to be a safe place. I used to watch Sesame Street and uh, 
Man, what was the one? Uh, oh gosh, there was another one. I used to, but it was like on PBS. I used to watch those PBS shows. Teletubbies. Uh, no, it wasn't Teletubbies, man. I'm, I'm, <laughs> that's a millennial thing. Yeah, no, Mr. Rogers. I, I ain't no. T- I used to watch Mr. Rogers. You know what I'm saying? No, there was another uh, one, man. Something one, two, three, and Spider Man used to be on. That. I can't remember the other one that it used to be. Oh man, it's a throwback. It's only people in my age group are gonna know that. Arthur. Nah, I don't know about Arthur. Mm. I don't know about that. No. Arthur was our age, bro. Right. We have Fraggle Rock. Yeah. You remember Fraggle Rock? Oh, no. Man. Yeah. Yeah, what? When yeah. HBO came out, that was yeah, the first cable. Nah. But all we had was like regular TV channels. Yeah. And then we and then before before like you had cable with a cable box, we got HBO. Mm. Man, HBO was the shiz, man. Yeah. That thing was a big <laughs> deal when you got HBO. They you got had Fraggle HBO Rock. What? But my Let's point was is that there was no little innuendo right. in those things back then. Right. And now they make it a point to put it out there. So that's part of those perilous times because it's so much more prevalent. The evil communications are, and more people are on board with it, whether whether willingly as they're part of the agenda, as they're part of the crafty council, mm-hmm. or they just suck it into it and they fight for it. Just like that scene in The Matrix with Morpheus, yeah. right? Hey, pull that up just in case we're going to show it again. Because mm-hmm. this goes into what I'm saying right now with the, with the woman in the red dress, right? Because you got a lot of our people that they'll spew it and they don't even, and they'll defend it right. blindly, not even realizing fight the peril yeah. that they're bringing to their people yeah. in doing that. And a lot of that goes to seeking your own righteousness versus his righteousness. All right, so read this again. The book of 2 Timothy, chapter 3 and verse 1. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous. Right, so what does it mean, a love of their own self? It means that you will put yourself and what you want and what you desire and what makes you feel good above anything else. Mm Mm-hmm. The rationale goes out the window, the spiritual mind goes out the window, and the carnal stays present. Mm. And you say, I love myself more. So this is why you read in Matthew, and he says, you have to seek his righteousness. Because in the last days, you attempting to seek righteousness, thinking you're a good person and a good guy. I used to think I was a pretty good guy. Right. I, I, I was admit, you know, by all standards of what the world would say, I was a pretty good guy. And you look at what the scriptures say, and I wasn't. Right. Mm. I was a sinner. It was things that I was shameful of, that the ends thereof were going to be death if I didn't leave those things. Mm-hmm. So he says, but in those last times, it'll be perilous times. And he says, men shall be lovers of their own selves. And he's going to talk about the things that will drive their version of righteousness in their mind. Read. Covetous. That's what the pastor was saying. Look, these brothers now drive forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollar vehicles. Right, hey, right. The hell does that have to do with the kingdom of heaven? Not saying you can't have a nice car. Right. But what does that have to do with you being right with God? They're mistaking godliness with gain. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. Come on. Mm. Covetous. Boasters. Same thing. We you saw the cars we rolled off in. Right. Damn. I'm gonna show you how much I love you. Right. I'm gonna buy you some Burger King. Come on. Proud. Blasphemers, disobedient to parents, bro. Unthankful. Hey, look at that, disobedient to parents. Letting right. you know that that's perilous. Not even, not even Chick Fil A, bro. They doing Burger King. Come Boy, on, he said man. the Burger King behind. It. I know. Well, Chick Fil A's closed on Sundays. Oh, dang, that's mm. true. Mm. <laughs> Come on, man. We want the Jesus chicken, bro. Come on, man. <laughs> that's Jesus chicken. Come on, read. Chicken. Unthankful. Unholy. Unthankful. Unholy. Why? Because it's the laws, statutes, and commandments like you read in Romans 7. It's the law that is good and holy. Mm -hmm. Read on. Without natural affection. Man, and you see that. So, you know, you're talking about in Jackson, they went to the Stop the Violence rally. Man, the the Bible here is giving you those answers. It's making you an aware. One of the main causes Mm -hmm. of that violence amongst ourselves is that there's no natural affection. Right. We have been desensitized. We are numb because we've be, they, they, they've continued to push on us loving yourself above all else. Mm-hmm. You know, and there's limits to selflessness. I think you read in the Apocrypha where it talks about when you help somebody see that you don't fall into the same. Right. So it doesn't mean that you're so selfless that you sacrifice yourself entirely, mm-hmm. right? And, and things that you got going on. But there's a lack of natural affection and looking out for each other and wanting to Wanting to truly try to lift each other up, mm-hmm. try to be edifying with each other, right? Come on. Without natural affection, truce breaker. Nobody keeps their word. Come on. False accusers. Well, uh, it's a big one. False accusers. Mm. 
bringing bringing false reports against people. Mm. Come on, incontinent, fierce, incontinent, basically meaning uh, you can't you can't hold anything in. You like the wind, so every doctrine, whatever comes your way, uh, like for example, incontinent, like medically means. You, you have diarrhea, like you can't hold your poop. <laughs> so you, so you, so you, so you, you're crapping all over the place. So if you're incontinent, you're full of s. You're full of you're full of s, <laughs> and yeah. and and it's and everybody can see it, okay. right? And you when you're incontinent, but meaning meaning you're not able to hold anything in, right? Right? <laughs> meaning you can't contain. You have no discipline in your spirit. You can't rule your spirit. That's the uh, the parable with Christ about the the wine glasses that can't hold in new wine. Yeah. So yeah, he says this, you can't pour new wine into old bottles, right? right. Because you know it'll. Crack. He talks about the garment that if you put a new piece on it, it'll rend. Right. right? Mm. So, um, and I think I've gone over that before. But go ahead, come on. Incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Man, the hate oh, that yep. we got to try to go out. Hey, like uh, uh, Soldier Daniel was just saying. He said, "Man, as soon as soon as they pulled up out here in Phoenix, they was already threatening with the cop, mm. unloading the equipment. Mm. Oh, we know who you are." But hey, you had another pastor talking about uh uh trying to say we gonna protect our family and this that and the other like try but subtly inciting violence against us, yeah. say, saying that we were calling uh uh the, the sisters bitches. Mm. Wow. Hey, mm. D, he said that uh they was gonna be prepared to have the police arrest us on site. Yeah, uh, obviously he don't know uh, how the law got things set up for us out here. We weren't on their property. Nobody's on their property. How, how can they be arrested on site? He really think they got... Bro, so, it, man, it's like despisers of those that are good. All that driven by hate. Come on. Uh, verse 5. Having a form verse of... Four, four. Oh, verse 4. Traitors, heady, high-minded... Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. High-minded means you that you cannot possibly know something about the Bible. But then one guy, the, the guy that said he was going to feed everybody was talking about, uh, I'm not going to debate the Bible with you. I'm going to win you with love. Wow. It's because you can't debate the Bible. Mm -hmm. High-minded. Talking about that they think that they got the answers, that they got the solutions. Mm -hmm. That the word is better than right, God's right. word. Yeah, that's a cop out when they say they don't want to debate the Bible with us because they know that they don't they they're gonna get chopped up. Mm -hmm. They're gonna get chapped up. Come on. I think Officer Elkina told me that the Christian pastor out here they went to he got confounded. He he came to Officer Nehemiah and was speaking to him. He got hey, confounded, that's uh bro. that's that's that that's uh Isaiah where it says you bring it to one that is uh mm. learned and mm. he says I cannot. Right, and you bring right. it to one that's not learned, right? Bro, these Christian pastors, they don't have answers. Hey, in a, a common denominator that you see in every video throw out, all IUIC schools that went to these Christian churches on Sunday, mm -hmm. who was on the forefront? The electric company. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Finish your thought. <laughs> who was on the forefront of these Christian churches? Who was on the forefront? What was the common denominator on every school. Hey, officer, can I say it? Yeah, go ahead. It was the sisters. The black woman. The black woman was on the forefront. The forefront. Not the pastors. Not the deacons. Not the reverends. The woman. Yeah, they sent the woman the out. Woman. They sent the woman out, like, in, in all those on cases. all the schools, everything yep. you see, yep. a woman, a woman, yep. a woman. Yeah, it was Electric Company. All right, I guess there's some people in, in my age group. Once I said the Spider-Man, and they did have Morgan Freeman, too. Hey, he looked, there was a brother that called age. in, Deacon, and he was, uh, he had said, he told, he was like, tell Deacon it's the Electric Company. <laughs> it's the Electric Company. Shout out to uh, Brother Tyler from yeah, San Antonio. Yeah, on Prince side. That came on right after Sesame Street. Right? <laughs> <laughs> there, were, there was no innuendo in those shows and stuff like that. That's what I was going into. Reverse 4 again. Come on. Verse 4, traitors, heady, high-minded. Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. That's why he says you have to seek his righteousness. Because you're going to love yourself more than you love God and what God tells you to do. That's heavy. So you're lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Read on. Verse 5. Having a form of godliness. Oh. Hey, and that goes for Israelites too. Right. But we're talking about what's out in the world. And you got our people mixed up in this Christianity. In the crack house called the Christian church. And they're saying they have a form of godliness. Mm -hmm. As far as the world is concerned, they look godly. They talk godly. They seem godly. They got the Bible. They got the Bible in their hand. Right. Right? Come on. But denying the power thereof. Man, this thing can change lives. Mm. This thing right here can build a nation back. 
this book right here is preordained and predestined is going to have the Israelites ruling the world and taking over. This book right here and the power that's in here is going to take down kings and kingdoms that are in the earth now. That's right. Thank you. This book is going to be stronger than nukes, than bombs, than tanks, than governments, than lies, than spiritual wickedness in high places. Mm. And they using this thing to line their pockets and keep some people in their church and talk about they having an impact on the people. What the hell is this? But then yet there's still violence in the community. Drugs, murder. So focused about loving all nations. Man, I saw so much stuff come out of these pastors' mouths after what happened on Sunday. Mm. And they think it was a one-week thing and that it's over. Mm-hmm. Could be a nightmare it's, it's, for them. Yeah, it's just the beginning. Could be a nightmare for them. Because mm-hmm. that's like we read in Ezekiel. They not sighing. They not crying for what they see. Right. 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 Read that again. Verse 5. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such turn away. Ooh, from such turn away. And it don't mean don't deal with them. It mean you blast the hell out of them. Right. Scripture says bear with them. It says you bear with them. That means you deal with them. Meaning you ain't there trying to. They guess they guess a point. I forgot what. I don't know. Was it was it Bishop Nathaniel bringing it out? And he was saying, listen, somebody you, you should know the difference between somebody that has sincere questions. And you bear with them that way, right? That's mm-hmm. like when you read in, uh, is it in Titus, where it talks about exhort and convince the gainsayers, right? right? Yes. That's that's different, all right? Get that, because we're going to read that in a second. That's different versus these scoffers that come out there and the stuff that I just told you, and they're not trying to hear. They're not trying. They're high-minded like we just read. Right. Right. They're lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. Right. And the way you bear with them in that way is... Uh, pulling down the stronghold. It means yes, you're pulling up. So that's what it means when it says turn away, and right? You, you think about it to turn away from the lies that they're teaching too. Like right. don't embrace it. We right. got a lot of people that because it feels good, they'll run back to the Christian church. Yep. Read on. Let's finish this before you go to Titus. Verse six. For for of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women, laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts. Right, and there's a lot of ways that we use this verse, but what did you just say? You said they got the silly woman mm-hmm. being their mouthpiece. In right. the forefront. Right. But yeah, because, ooh, oh, that's my pastor. That's pastor. Yep. Right? Mm-hmm. They feeling a way about that. I'm going to protect this man. I'm going to protect this church. Mm-hmm. Right? You know what it makes me think of? What? You know how the pastors be committing fornication with all the women in the church? Yes. That's the same thing? Same thing. Come on. Verse 7. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. They're ever learning. They go to their seminaries. They have their meetings. I guarantee you all of them had some Zoom meeting this way. Hey, we got to get together. Hey, was your church hit? Yeah, our church was hit. Yeah, our mm-hmm. church was hit too. Mm-hmm. Oh, snap. This is a tactic. Hey, they wanted that smoke. Right. Mm. They said that they was gonna come for us. <laughs> oh, that's right. So that's we right. brought it. We brought it to you first. Right. Mm. We brought it to your front door. <laughs> we brought it to your front door. What you the thought you was gonna do? This? Full of crap. You said you want the smoke, right. so we came with the smoke. Right. They don't want the smoke. And we gonna keep coming the with smoke. the smoke. <laughs> come on. Verse seven. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Ever learning, meaning they're always studying. They're always trying to get together, and not really studying. No. But what they're doing is they're just replicating what they learned in seminary, theology school, or whatever little certificate program that they're dealing with, all right? And it says they're never able to come to the knowledge of this truth. Come on. Verse 8. Now is Janus and Jambres, which stood Moses. Those were the sorcerers that, do, remember when Moses came and he turned the rod into a snake and they turned the rod into a snake, right? Mm-hmm. Up until a point, they would do things to try to match him. And even when they did, though, it was not as as magnanimous, as glorious as what God and the power that God gave Moses to do. Mm. And then they got to a point where they couldn't do nothing. Like a few plagues in, they were like, oh, damn, we we can't we can't match none of this. Right. Right. And they couldn't do it on the scale and magnitude of that. Mm -hmm. But he uses that as an example. And he says, it's the same spirit that they'll try to say. So we'll go out there. We'll try to say, look, brothers and sisters, we got the answers for you. And they'll come up and they'll be like, look, we got a shiny. Look, people in our congregation drive shiny new $40,000, $50,000, $60,000 cars. Right. Come on. So do the so do these also resist the truth? Meaning that goes into that high mindedness and everything else that they have. 
they don't want to learn. So re- listen, I'm not saying there was a few pastors that said, yeah, come speak at our church, mm-hmm. right? But that's of God. We brought that out last week, right? Uh, we, we plant, uh, we right. water, right. and God gives the increase, right? right. But, but you got these particular type of individuals, right? And it says they resist the truth because what they'll do is they'll say, oh, yeah, well, that's your answer. Well, look, this is what uh, it says. And that's if they even go into the Bible, mm-hmm. right? Come on. Men of corrupt minds. They're corrupt minds. Why? Because they're not seeking God's righteousness. They're seeking their own righteousness. They're seeking to be good with the Romans. They're That's seeking exactly the, to mm-hmm. not be their, their chairs or their seats to not be removed from the Romans. Right. Right. Yes, they want to maintain their seat. That's exactly what it is. Come on. Reprobate concerning the faith. They're reprobate. They'll say one thing and say, and, and out of this Bible say, yes, do this, that, and the other. But they are reprobate concerning the faith. And the faith is that Christ is going to return to save his people from their sins and our enemies. Right. And they don't do that. They say they think they're why Jesus is for everybody. Mm-hmm. Come on. Verse 10. But thou hast fully. Oh, no, no, verse, verse nine. 9. But they shall proceed no further. For their folly shall be manifest unto all men, as theirs also was. And how is their folly going to be manifest unto all men? There has to be a remnant, right? Except there be a remnant, we'd all be a Sodom and Gomorrah. Why? Because you would have people teaching for commandments the doctrines of men. Mm. So you need to have people that are going to gird up their loins and stand up against the evildoers that are out there. Yes, even amongst our own people. It's real obvious for most of our people. That the white man and all the heathen with him are our enemies. But you have to look at the enemy amongst you. Mm -hmm. You have to look at those corrupt minds, like the scripture just said, that will not, that they will resist the truth. And how are they going to be revealed? We have to do it. That's how they will not be able to proceed no further. So that their folly will be manifest unto all men. All right. right. Give me that what I said in Titus with the difference. Go ahead. Say what you want to say. I was going to say, I I found a scripture we were talking about their own righteousness. Oh, after, okay. After you're done. Yeah, after let me read this and then you could go to that. Yep. Yes, sir. The book of Titus, chapter one, verse nine. Read it out. Holding fast the faithful word as he had been taught, that ye may be able by sound doctrine. So meaning let God be true and every man a liar. You hold fast to what you've been taught in this Bible, strong in the faith, that if you have individuals out there that have sincere questions, mm-hmm. right? This is what's applied. Come on. That ye that he may be able by sound doctrine. By sound doctrine. Mm. Both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. Right, so in that teaching process, when somebody comes and they're genuinely wanting to learn, Mm -hmm. there's exhortation Mm -hmm. and a convincing. There's a persuasion there, Mm -hmm. all right, to to convert that gainsayer, to win those souls back to Christ, to the most high in Christ, right? But then you have others that you just got to blast them. You got to shake the finger. Right. You got to curse them out, Mm -hmm. right? You got to blast the hell out of them. You read in Ezekiel, right? Yeah. They're stiff neck and rebellious, but he said, I made your forehead hard against their forehead. Right. That's saying that you're holding fast to what we learned there. Read that part again in verse 9. Holding fast the faithful word as he had been taught. That's that adamant harder than flint. That's why he's made our foreheads strong against their foreheads. Their minds and their doctrines corrupt. Mm -hmm. So he says, we hold that fast as we exhort and convince the gainsayers. Mm -hmm. But then you got the other ones where you just got to blast the hell out of them. Mm -hmm. You just got to blast the hell out of them. Uh, Go ahead. What were you going to bring up? Uh, It's Philippians. Uh, Philippians 3 and 9. Because it's, uh, it's the same thing along the lines as far as for establishing our own righteousness. Mm-hmm. We, we read, uh, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Yep. You want to read? The book of Philippians chapter 3 verse 9. Read it out. And be found in him, not having my own righteousness. Not having my own righteousness. We should be found in Christ. It says that, that we should be walking as he walked. Mm-hmm. So it's the same thing. We should be found in him, not having my own righteousness or what I think is right. Read. Which is of the law. And this is going into the law of sacrifice. Read. Right. But that which is through the faith of Christ. And this is the sincere faith of Christ. The, that his son died for our sins and that we can continue to grow in these laws that he's given us read the righteousness which is of god by faith and that righteousness is of god by faith in his son that we can keep these laws with faith in his sacrifice that he gave his life for us all praises yeah, keep all talking praises. i'm looking for saying romans what you want romans 10 10 romans 10 where we at? we love our people because what we're doing is convincing the gainsayers so they can be able to 
see the light. But you know what? No, 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 no. Where's that? About give me uh I was reading it. Oh gosh. What are you looking for? About they don't want the light because the light reveals See now I'm I'm going somewhere else. And I don't even know where it's uh, at. Uh, based on what you Go just ahead. read in Philippians, I want to bring I want to bring this out to show that people, Paul's saying the same thing. Read Philippians again, and then give me Hebrews ten and sixteen. I got Hebrews. The book of Philippians, chapter three and verse nine. Bring it out. And be found in Him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law. Meaning, right, the the way the sacrificial law was set up, it 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 gave you your own righteousness. Why? Because there were laws that you could just go and say, okay, I'm going to offer this. Hey, oh, okay, word. All right, I could steal. I just got to bring this turtle. All right, yeah, I'm going to do this. Mm. Right. Yeah, let me just line up my turtle doves right. so that I can go and do this, right? It's like that uh, you had a swear jar when you were a kid. Yeah, yeah. like a swear jar. Uh, you know what? Here's 10 bucks because I'm about to go off. Right. And you throw that in the swear jar and you just drop all the F-bombs worth of, right? What, what, what profit is there, really? Right. So you wind up seeking your own righteousness in that because you start to justify action saying, oh, well, I got this way out here, right? Come on. And be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ. Right. So what does he mean, the righteousness that's through the faith of Christ? Let's go to Hebrews 10 and 16. The book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 16. Bring it out. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts and... The and in their minds will I write them. Right. So meaning he's saying, this is the covenant I'm going to make after those days. My law will be in their heart. Meaning after what days? When Christ came on the scene. Right. When Christ returns again, we're going to have that in us. Let me get John 1 where he says uh, grace and truth. Got you. The book of St. John, chapter 1 and verse 17. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Right, so grace and truth. That's the righteousness in Christ that we want to keep, right? Mm -hmm. That's what that's speaking about. That's what that's going into when you read that. Uh, what else? You were going to bring something else out. Who, me? Yeah, you were saying something else. Yeah, I'm trying to find it real quick. Uh, 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 uh. And, then, and then let me get Hebrews 8. Uh, Go ahead, get Hebrews 8. 319? 7. Let me yeah. get 8 and 7. Hebrews 8 and 7. I think so, Michael. Thank you. The book of Hebrews, chapter 8 and verse 7. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. So again, so in Philippians, Paul was saying, my own righteousness, which is not of the law. He's talking about that first covenant. Come mm -hmm. on. It's not faultless. Come on. Verse 8. For finding fault with them, he saith, behold. The days come, saith the Lord. Meaning, he still found fault in the people because of what we just said, right? And even then, they were bringing jacked up animals. They weren't doing it. It was more like, okay, the swear jar. That's like a perfect right. analogy for it, mm -hmm. right? Oh, okay. All I got to do is throw a quarter in there. I'm good. Right. Hey, let me let me line it up. Let me throw it in in advance. Right. Oh, man, I'm going to curse this dude out. Right. Right. Let me save up my money. Come right. on. And the way they do it today is, let me line up my tithes. Yep. Let yep. me line up a tithes. Come on, or they put they put emphasis on things that don't have to do with the law to try to justify all other behavior. Oh, all I gotta do is love. All you gotta do is love Jesus. Come mm. on. The days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Come on, meaning but all Israel, southern and northern kingdom. Come on. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. Meaning not the sacrificial law, right? Because that was given back to us then through the mouth of Moses after we were redeemed from Egypt. Come on. Because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. Right, read. For this is the for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. Meaning the laws aren't gone. The laws aren't gone. We have to seek his righteousness, right? right? And also like we read in Deuteronomy 6, 25, all right? What else? Uh, you, you were looking for something to bring nah, in? No, because I just want to get real to quick, the, Real quick, real quick. Oh, I wanted stuff. John 1. John 1 and 17 again? <laughs> yeah. Read it again. I got to, to leave that. Now that I read that, read John 1 and 17. The, the book of St. John, chapter 1 and verse 17. For the law was given by Moses... But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Right. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ, meaning mercy and the law. 
right? I mean, no more sacrifice. No more sacrifice. Hey, make sure we're uh, uh, monitoring the feed. Boot who you need to boot. Give them the blockanda. Yeah. All right. Get one more real quick. Yeah, go ahead. Get Hebrews 10 and, 10 and 2. Hebrews 10 and 2. Hebrews 10 and 2. The book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 2. Just to add into the the reason Dang, why. So on, on the Phoenix page and on the classroom page, you got scoffers. Mm. Dang. The reason why they came into that, that uh, why the Most High gave us these this new covenant, why well, we have this sacrifice instead of keeping the law of sacrifice. Read. Mm-hmm. The book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 2. For then, for then would they not have ceased to be offered. We would have continually offered these sacrifices and continuing to go back to sin. Read. Because that the worshipers, once purged, should have had no more... Con- I'm sorry. Uh, Read it from the top. For then would they have not ceased to be offered. We would have con- if we knew that we had a way out, the wages of sin, we could just sacrifice and then we would be able to be forgiven and go back, uh, uh, just go about our day. Because that the worshipers, once purged, once we were purged from those sins, read, should have had no more conscience of sins. We're not mindful of what we're doing wrong. So then we can see we're not changing. There's no change. So, yeah. Right. All praises. Right. All praises. Uh, Yeah. Make sure that they're monitoring the feed. I still see these people in I'm these tr- chats. Yeah. I don't know what and they're doing. It's kind of uh, my fault, too, because I don't have uh, my phone. And, okay. Uh, all right. I usually do it. Just don't want people. And, and and you don't gotta engage these uh scoffers in the chat, brothers and sisters. All right. You could just just keep it moving. All right. And then we'll we'll try to get on it. Make sure they get the uh the wrench. All right. Like the brother just put, give him the wrench. <laughs> uh. Hey. So let's jump into the Roe v. Wade stuff. So not a lot of people know exactly what Roe versus Wade is. I think there's a presumption. Right, so when you mention Roe versus Wade, people might not know. So we're gonna read a little bit about Roe versus Wade, and then we're gonna talk about uh, you may or may not have seen what's going on in the news and what's you know. Every time I see it, it just aggravates me when I see the stupidity. I saw the Facebook post. We're gonna the video you put. <laughs> we gotta put that. We gotta put what that. What you think about that? Man, man, that thing was hilarious. We're gonna play it. We're gonna play it. That's how good, that's how good it was. We're gonna play it. All right. Roe v. Wade, Roe v. Wade. Uh, go ahead, read, uh, read that. Roe v. Wade, <laughs> 1973, was a landmark decision of the U.S. Supreme Court in which the court ruled that the Constitution of the United States protects a pregnant woman's liberty to choose to have an abortion without excessive government restriction. Right, so basically they're allowed to commit murder so long as the baby has not been birthed. Mm. Right, that's essentially what that, what that ruling is. License to kill. Right, a license to kill, so long as the baby has not been birth. Mm. And I say it that way because you know they, you have all this gray area that they use to try to maintain the argument. When does life begin? Mm. Right, but we'll talk about that later. Anyway, go ahead. The decision struck down many U.S. federal and state abortion laws. Roe fueled an ongoing abortion debate in the United States about whether, to, whether or to what extent abortion should be legal who should decide the legality of abortion, and what the role of moral and religious views in the political sphere should be. It also shaped debate concerning which methods the Supreme Court should use in constitutional... Education. Education. Adjudication, sorry. Adjudication. Yes. The decision involved the case of Norma McCorvey, known by the legal pseudonym Jane Roe, who in 1969 became pregnant with her third child, McCorvey, wanted an abortion but lived in Texas, where abortion was illegal except when necessary to save the mother's life. Right, so there's certain situations like uh, ectopic pregnancies, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, That's when the the, the baby implants outside of the uterus, okay? Mm -hmm. It's not going to get nourished there. I mean, you know, they give you these percentages and they say sometimes or whatever, but basically the... The baby and the mother are at risk of death with those type of pregnancies, all right? Mm-hmm. Because it's not where the baby needs to be, right? You need to be in the uterus for the protection, for the nourishment, and all that type of stuff like that. And there's a high risk, like the percentages are very high, that the mother could die. So they're saying in Texas at this time, it was only for things potentially like that right. that you were able to perform an abortion. Come on. Her attorneys, Sarah Weddington and Linda Coffey, 
filed a lawsuit on her behalf in U.S. federal court against her local district attorney, Henry Wade, alleging that Texas abortion laws were unconstitutional. A three-judge panel of the U.S. District Court for the Northern District of Texas heard the case and ruled in her favor. Texas then appealed directly to the U.S. Supreme Court. In January 1973, the Supreme Court issued a 7-2 decision in McCorvey's favor, ruling that that the Due Process Clause of the 14th Amendment to the United States Constitution provides a right to privacy that protects a pregnant woman's right to choose whether to have an abortion. It also ruled that this right is not absolute and must be balanced against government's interests in protecting women's health and pre prenatal life. The court resolved this balancing test by tr by tying state regulation of abortion to the three trimesters of pregnancy. During the first trimester, governments could not prohibit abortions at all. During the second trimester, governments could require reasonable health regulations. During the third trimester, abortions could be prohibited entirely, so long as the laws contain exceptions for cases when they were necessary to save the life or health of the mother. Right. So they didn't even say no in the third trimester. They said uh, they just loosened the restrictions on the states as to whether to allow it or not. Go back. Go back. You're scrolling too fast. Go back up. Go back up. So. What they wound up doing, supposedly, they said, but get me that where it says wrong judgment proceedeth, right? It says the court <laughs> resolved this balancing test by tying state regulation of abortion. To, so basically, they went and in their minds and in their infinite wisdom, I say that with quotation, air quotations, all right? In their yeah. infinite wisdom, you, you lost, you moved it. Come on, man. You nervous no. over there? What are you doing? You know, you, no, you totally passed it by. There we go. Okay. And they said, I'm going to tie this to three trimesters. They basically said during the first trimesters, governments could not prohibit abortions at all. Meaning they said, okay, that's not a person. That's not a baby during the first three months. That's wild. That's essentially what that's saying. See, they, they put in nice words to it. But they said during the first three months, it doesn't count. It doesn't count. Imagine, imagine that there's nothing there. It's not a person. All right. Then they said, uh, during the second trimester, governments could retry reasonable, require reasonable health regulations. Meaning, uh, okay, you could come in and give some stipulation at that point, right? To say whether or not you can abort a child. And then during the third trimester, it says they could be prohibited entirely, so long as the laws contained exceptions for cases when they were necessary to save a life or health of the mother. Meaning, depending on how they wanted to word it, and it says it could, meaning there were some states that left it alone and that allowed it. And if you look at the stages of development with, 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 uh, with babies, third trimester, you basically this baby fully formed, basically looking more like a, what you would expect a typical human being to look like. Right. But then they went ahead... And they, they, you're going to see you have this argument of, well, when does life start? And when we watch the video, you'll see the, you'll see the stupidity of the, of the, she says, pro-choice. And that's the other thing. They like to play with semantics on this stuff. Uh, they'll say, I'm not pro-abortion, I'm pro-choice, because it sounds nicer. So I'm not, I'm not a murderer, all right? I, I just, uh. I, I, it's it's the woman's right to choose, and we gotta talk about that right to choose in a little bit. Give me give me the scripture. I'll tell you to pull for me. The book of Habakkuk, chapter one, verse four. Freedom! Therefore, the law is slacked, and judgment does not does never go forth, for the wicked doth compass about the righteous. Therefore, wrong judgment proceeded. Right. So they went here, and wrong judgment proceeded. They said, "Yeah, you can murder." You can murder your baby. Get me that in Exodus 20. It's the sixth commandment, I believe. <laughs> well, that's that uh, that's that God complex. They think they're trying to play God. The book of Exodus chapter 20 uh and verse 13. Freedom! Thou shall not kill. It's killing. They try to play God. It thou shall not kill. Thou shall not kill. And that's essentially what's being done there. It's murder. You're saying, hey, listen, I got something here. The 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 miracle of life. Uh get me that Psalms 139, 14. I forgot what word he uses. 
the heritage doesn't call it the miracle. Kids? No. Oh, 139? Yeah, I think it's 139 and 14. Hold on. Let me make sure. Yeah. Wonderful. Yep. The book of Psalms, chapter 139 and verse 14. Read it! I will praise thee. For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am wonderfully made. The, the, the way that the Most High ordained how we would be fruitful and multiply. Right. That whole process is amazing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Esau has gone through it and they talk about embryology and all this stuff. And they've done the experiments where they look at this stuff and they break it down. But it still does not like that, that's programming. Which 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 implies a creator, and the body and and the way the Mosa has set us up is is programming you as to how as to how the two components of the two of the man and the woman come together, <laughs> right. the seed and the egg, right, and then the process that begins in that. <laughs> you even think about when you come out of the womb, right? Breathing. Uh -huh. That's programming because how are you gonna know when if you don't breathe? Yeah, then it's nat there's yeah. natural things you're born knowing how to yeah. do. Yeah, it's like involuntary. You just do it. Right. 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 It's just done. Read this again. The Book of Psalms, chapter one thirty nine and verse fourteen. I will praise thee. So we need to praise God for the fact that we even hear. Come on. For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Come on. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. Right. So just the mere fact of create that's an act of creation. Right. That God programmed to happen perpetually. Mm. Right. The, the the initial creation that he did, he did with Christ, and he made all that stuff. And then after that, he set it in motion, and he that's the programming for creation. Right. You're creating a life. <clears throat> and it says it's fearfully and wonderfully made. And then on top of that, once you receive these commandments, now your soul is nervished and right well. Can I get a scripture? Go ahead. Uh, Ecclesiastes 10. Ecclesiastes 10 Boy, and verse 5. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 10 and verse 5. Bring it out! There is an evil which I have seen under the sun, as an error which proceeded from the ruler. So we were reading... Wrong judgment proceeded from the ruler, right? Uh, I'm sorry, from a wrong judgment proceeded. And here it says, and it, it seems like the Most High made it made an error. He made, like, there's something wrong in the playbook. Go ahead. Verse 6, folly is set in great dignity, and the rich sit in low place. And folly is set in great dignity to where today they say, no, you can kill a born live baby that is not full well established but as long as 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 soon as he goes into his mother's that the, the egg goes into the to the woman's uh uterus it is born so, it is breathing. as soon as the sperm hits the egg it's that's it's, life that's life right. the, the process of creation that the most high encoded in us mm. is set in motion it's already in process it's in process already right life is created Mm-hmm. Yeah, think about it. So then you, there's so many examples you can use. All right, so when 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 the seed hits the soil and starts to sprout, do you say that that's not a that's you have a you have a plant there? Like it's going, right? right, right. It's not full grown yet it's for you to pluck fruit and stuff off of it. Right. But you wouldn't go and destroy it at we, that point. We did an experiment uh uh in grade school where they would take uh seeds and you put it in a napkin. And you make it wet mm -hmm. and put it right. in a bag, right? Uh -huh. and, and they start they sprouting start sprout. right away, like it, within twenty four hours, yeah, it right. sprouts. So you see, that's that's life. Be it's not it's not a tree. Yet. Again, it's, it's not it's, even it's, planted it's, in the ground. It's, it's the encoding of creation right. Yeah. Right. that God locked into our cells. Right. That's that heavy. God locked into our, our our genome. That's heavy. Right. That's they call it genome. They say the DNA sequence. They got a term for like the DNA, like the like the final chain of it. They they say something about it, even in the science community, something in relation to the most <laughs> high, like God's programming or God's coding or something like that. Right. They call it. And all life has that process from seeds to, to, to animal life to, you know, vegetation, whatever it is. Right. And there's a process. But when it comes to human life, we're, we're dumb about it. I give the example of the seed. Once that sprouts, when does that happen? The water comes, right? Same thing. So once that, that seed gets into the egg, that process has already started. Life right. is in motion. Right. Let's take it another step further. 
What? You open your legs. Well, the process. No, no, no. We're gonna, no, we're gonna, no, we're gonna talk about that <laughs> later. Can, can I get talk, don't, don't jump ahead. We're gonna talk about that later. Go ahead. Script, get wisdom of Solomon real quick. Yeah, no. Wisdom of Solomon, thirteen and one. I'm not trying to be you deep. Said I'm that, just the, to... You said creation. They're ignorant of it, right? Yep. They're ignorant of the well, process. They say that they are, but uh, thirteen. Wisdom of Solomon, thirteen and one. Go ahead. Thirteen and one. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter thirteen, verse one. Read it. Surely. Vain are all men by nature. By nature, all men are vain. Mm -hmm. We're carnally minded. That's why we need these laws. We were talking about that high mindedness, that high mindedness, Mm -hmm. that pride. Mm -hmm. Who are ignorant of God? Naturally, we are ignorant of God. That's why we need God's word to be able to seek Him, to learn what is pleasing in His sight. Read. Who are ignorant of God and cannot out the good things that are seen. The good things that are seen. You see a pregnant woman that has child in her in her, in her body. She's bringing forth life that God put that in her. Read. Know him that is. They don't know him that is. Read. Neither by considering the works did they acknowledge. The, work, the works is that woman being pregnant with life. She did not create that being. She didn't put the soul in, this, in, in the uh, child. She didn't, put, she didn't make the uh, child grow and get that programming. Read. Neither by considering the works did they acknowledge the workmaster. They didn't acknowledge the workmaster because God is the one that's laboring to create that child, to bring forth that soul into this earth. Read. Oh, no, that's it. That's it. Let me get Ecclesiastes 11 and 5. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 11 and verse 5. Read out. As thou knowest not what is the way of the Spirit. That's going into what you're saying. They don't know the way of God. Right. They don't know the way. They don't understand. They can. They can pictured i mean i think i have a book at home that talks about that and it shows the different phases of the pregnancy and whatever i think it's called life mm, right yeah. and guess what the book is called life and it starts when the seed <laughs> and the right. so even in their own books right it's called life right, right. there's like a scientific <laughs> book supposedly it's Oxymorons. called life right what the hell is this? and they and they start when with the conception right, right. they call that conception right <laughs> it says so it says uh, thou knowest not what is the way of the spirit. Okay, come on. Nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child. Even so, thou knowest not the works of God who maketh all. All right, so that's creation. That's 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 like him Bombs. setting the creation in motion. And he's done that process. What he showed us is like, look, this is the things that you got to do to set off this encoding. So that means if we plant a garden. Right. Mm, we right. know that you put the seed, you water it, there's nutrients and this thing is going to grow. It's going to it's going to be alive and come out and do all that stuff. Right. Um, same thing with people. He says, hey, man and woman get together. This is this is the act of sex. This is what you do. Boom. This is what comes of that. Right. This is what comes of that. And it says we don't understand, you know, how that, you know, yes, I'm sorry. Science says, look, there's a blastocyte and it does this and it does that. And this is what forms the bone. But they don't know how that perpetual encoding was started to begin with. Right. These are like the little holes in their theories of evolution that just don't make sense. So then they take that and they see themselves in their pomp. Right. And they sit as if they are God. Right. And they say, no, life is here. It's Mm -hmm. not there. This is what we determine when life starts. Mm-hmm. But if God starts a process that you have, the only control you have is man and woman come together. Right. Deposit the seed. And then after that, it's in the most high's hands. That's what they because, fear. Because look, look, the little semen, the little freaking sperm doesn't have a brain. Right. But it knows to fight <laughs> and swim and move and head for that egg. Right. And the egg knows after one is in, it's going to it's gonna release something that locks the rest of them out. Right. Mm. And then a process is going to start. Mm. And it knows how to move down and implant where it needs to implant. Mm, mm, mm. And it knows how to get nourished. It knows how to keep what's safe in there. When to form what, in what order. Mm. And you're telling me that they think because they, they're able to look in and have seen that process, that they understand the encoding that makes that happen? Not possible. They can't replicate that. Even with the things that they do as far as medicine with in vitro fertilization and things like that, they still need the seed and the egg to do what God programmed it to do right. in order for it to happen. Right. They can facilitate, but they cannot create. They're not God. No. I mean, you know, they got this genetic cloning BS, but that doesn't happen by the same process. Right, right. Hey, verse 6, I'm reading it. 
and it kind of sounds and i don't that's why i don't want to read it and then not know what it really saying going into but it kind of what you said like uh uh you you do what the natural thing right and then the egg goes and then it, it says thou know it's not whether it shall prosper you don't right. know if it's gonna live right. or not right yeah read it because you said it and then so now read it yes but so i don't know is, i mean i don't know if it goes into that, that verse or not. Is heavy. it is it's heavy. okay Go ahead. the book of ecclesiastes chapter 11 and verse 6 in the morning sow thy seed and in the evening withhold not thine hand for thou knowest not whether whether it shall prosper and that goes into both uh, husbandry, which is farming and mm. sowing real seed, mm. and also goes into sow your seed to have children, right? right? So he says, For thou knowest not whether it shall prosper. All you can do is facilitate the process, and God is the one that has set that encoding in each mm. of us and in all his creation, right. from plant life to, to animal life to humans, all right? Hey, D, we For got it to call move it. forward. Oh, well, okay, okay. What, what's it about? Uh, it's Officer Jiraiya. I think he said that's his name from uh, San Antonio camp. Okay. He just had a, some input about Planned Parenthood. Okay. All right. Uh, Why didn't we use the ring? The ring. Yeah, you were supposed to use the ring instead of just. Where's don't even click? Sound click right. the come on button Push, for yourself. Click the come on button for yourself. <laughs> He's live. <laughs> hey, shalom, <laughs> Officer. Most High Christ bless you. Shalom, Most High Christ. Bless. Welcome to the Power Hour Plus. Shalom, Deacon. Most time, Christ bless, sir. How you doing? Good, good. I'm doing well. Great, great. Uh, don't know if you shared this yet or if you guys have found it, but if you can just Google Planned Parenthood pamphlet, they have on their pamphlet, and it's a white one with it highlighted in pink and with a circle around it. They have it on there, on their own pamphlet. No, because it's like a question and answer thing on their pamphlet. And it says... No, an abortion kills the baby. They say it themselves out of their own mouths. Oh, that's heavy. So they heavy. know it's life. Hey, hey, uh, go to brochures. See if it's the brochure. Well, that's a fact sheet. Go back. Brochures. Let's see if it's there. I want to see that. Right. We're, we're about to read about Planned Parenthood, too. So uh, a, you, said it's a, you said it's a pink one? <clears throat> no, uh, it's a white page with, I think it's black letters, but it's highlighted. Oh. You see it highlighted wait, in wait, pink, wait, and it'll have up. a circle drew around it. Is a circle? Planned Parenthood pamphlet. Yeah, there's a few they got up there. Uh, wait, go to the images instead. Maybe maybe don't go to their site. Right. Go to images. Images, yes, sir. Planned Parenthood. Uh, and you said there's a circle? Or, uh, or stuff like that? Yes, sir. It'll be one of the images. All right, we, 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 we going to have them try to look for it, because that's heavy. That's true. They, they're basically telling themselves. That it kills the baby. Click on yeah, that. They're trying to say when it's. Mm. Oh. No, that's. A... Is it an abortion? I kill... Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, uh, full screen. Zoom in. No, it... I don't. I don't think that. You think that's it? Go I... ahead, keep going. It kills. Oh, life. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, here it is. So it so... says your question's answered. <laughs> is it an abortion? It says definitely not. An abortion requires an operation. So this is. Birth control. So this is a question about birth control. Mm. So this is how you would miss it in the scheme of abortion mm -hmm. because you're not looking at this information under the abortion section. You're looking at it under the uh, uh, birth control section. And they said, no, definitely not. Meaning they're about to show you what an abortion really is right. in comparison to birth control. An abortion requires an operation. It kills the life of a baby after it has begun. Bruh. Bums. Bruh. IT, where you this at? There terrible. we go. Come on. There I, we go. I, 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 are they there taking notes? Is that what it is? They're taking notes? I'm going to bring the string deck in These here. guys, you know, people have complained to me that we don't, that people aren't hitting sound the sounds enough. I'm going to bring yeah. the sound effects in here. I got you. Oh, you're going to bring them in? I'm going to bring them in. Let's bring them right in here. Let's bring them right I in here. I got you. It says it kills the life of a baby after it has. Hey, you, we need to download that and save that thing, boy. Mm. We need to download that and save that thing. Hey, look at look at the other thing uh, over here on the left. It says when you want to have uh, babies, when you, you and your husband are well enabled. You and your husband, Bruh. not you and baby daddy, not you and whoever. Bruh. You and your husband. Continue. We gotta download this thing, bro. Hey, and it says you and your husband are well and able to take care of them. Right. Yeah, so even after you married, it's still. There's planning behind it from what they say. Yeah. The yeah. proper way. Yep. Yep. All right, that's heavy. Let's download that and save that so we don't forget this thing, all right? Let's download that and save that. Oh, hey, go back I'll to... Play, uh, 
All praises. Go back. Hey, all praises. Thank you, officer. I appreciate that. You see that last paragraph <laughs> on the left? Planning your That's children awesome. does not only mean being able to wait until you are well enough and able to take care of a baby. Oh, wow. Look at Family that. Family planning also. Right. Means, man, we have to go mm-hmm. and deep dive. See, but, but you know what? They have that in writing, but then their whole agenda with Planned Parenthood is really to push abortions in, in the Israelite community with yes. the black and Hispanics. Right. Hey, so you can use this for your marriage class. Hey, you're right. So download it. Hey. Post it. You know what? Post it to the uh, classroom page. So <laughs> when I do my when I do my class about selecting a partner, right? It's really that's really what it's gonna focus on when I do that marriage <laughs> class. It's about even in this walk with all that we know, many of us still don't try to select a partner for the right reasons. That's heavy. Like like I understand the attraction is what opens up the door first, mm-hmm. but there's too much emphasis on that. Yeah. There's too much. That's not. That's not godlike. The way we look for a partner. That it's makes not. Sense. It's not godlike. It's carnal. That, that's gonna be the point of when I do that class. Lord's will, life last. I I get it done when I have that opportunity. Anyway, let's go back to this Roe v. Wade thing. All right. So, uh, we read the trimester thing. Go back. Where were we? That was the trimester. Okay. The court classified the right to choose to have an abortion as fundamental which require courts to evaluate challenged abortion laws under the strict scrutiny standard, the highest level of judicial review in the United States. Uh, The court's ruling in Roe was criticized by some in the legal community, and some called the decision an example of judicial activism. The Supreme Court revisited and modified Roe's legal rulings in its 1992 decision, Planned Parenthood versus Casey. Go ahead, read the rest of that. Uh, Where are we at? Read the rest. Planned Parenthood versus Casey. In Casey, the court reaffirmed Rose's holding that a woman's right to choose to have an abortion is constitutionally protected, but abandoned Rose's trimester framework in favor of a standard based on fetal viability and overruled the strict scrutiny strand standard for reviewing abortion restrictions. Right. So it says uh, you had this. It reaffirmed Rose's holding. About a woman's right to choose. We're going to talk about that. Choose to have an abortion. It's constitutionally protected. But abandon Rose's trimester framework, right? So from 73 until 1992, they had this trimester framework, right? Right. And they said now they went, they went ahead and they said we're going to change the standards. So again, wrong judgment going out. Mm-hmm. Framing mischief by law based on fetal viability. Just highlight the fetal viability, like hover over it. Go ahead. Fetal viability is the ability of a human fetus to survive outside the uterus. Fetal viability is generally considered to begin at 23 or 24 weeks gestational age. By 23 weeks, 55% of infants survive preterm birth, while approximately 60 to 70% survive by 20. So look at the evil that they have now. They, they're they saying, instead of going by trimester, they right. said... The f- it's not it's going to be based on whether it could survive outside the womb mm. that's what determines if it's life wow. and they're saying that doesn't happen until 23 to 24 weeks how long is the pregnancy 40 is it 40 weeks or 42 I don't know I anywhere confused. between I don't know. 39 I, I go and about months. 42 it's 42 it's really 42. right yeah I go into they say 40, right? But I think it's really 42 when you count the conception. So you're already halfway there. More yes. than that. You're already more than halfway there. Yes. That's, yes. that's crazy. So that's the second trimester. So they're yeah. saying that that's how they determine it now with the with the update on the Planned Parenthood versus Casey, right? Uh, let's, let's read on because this goes into what came out, and we're going to read about this, right? So that's crazy. They're telling you that the, despite what's going on, at that point in the womb, mm-hmm. that because it can't survive outside of the uterus, then it's not technically considered murder. Mm. That's essentially what they do. It. That's dumb as hell. Mm. All right, go ahead. Read, let, read on. As hell. On May second, two thousand twenty-two, polit- Politicio obtained a leaked initial draft majority opinion penned by Justice Samuel Alito, indicating that the Supreme Court is prepared to overturn Roe and Casey in a pending final decision on Dobbs v. Jackson Women's Health Organization, expected to be held by June 2022. A press release from Chief Justice John Roberts the following day confirmed the authenticity of the leaked document, but stated that 
stated that the draft does not represent a decision by the court or the final position of any member on the issue in the case. Right. So this came out. This was in the news. Some of you who who are aware and reading this stuff, you may have noticed it. Right. So Roe versus whenever you hear Roe versus Wade is going into abortion Mm -hmm. uh, rights is what they say. Right. And then there was a leaked document from the Supreme Court because there's another case coming up where they're going to be able to revisit it. And uh, so they draft these opinions, apparently, in the Supreme Court ahead of the because they review the cases in advance Mm -hmm. before they actually tried them. And uh, this opinion leaked. Right. So, you know, I'm pretty sure there was somebody there Mm -hmm. and they said, oh, they're about to overturn it. Let's put this out. And what that did was is that prompted uh, Congress and some senators to say, we need to then try to pass a law Mm -hmm. versus making it an opinion based on the court. Wow. So go back to the article now that was put out. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're going to talk about the whole gender party thing. And if we have time, I'll show the other video about the transracial thing. <laughs> Bro, look at his face. So it says Senate GOP mansion block abortion <laughs> rights legislation. So GOP is dealing. I forgot exactly what the acronym means, but that's Republicans when it, when you read GOP. OK. All right. So they're saying GOP and then mansion is a Democrat. Uh, that's been basically a thorn in the Democrat side because he's more, they say, moderate, meaning he's not so extreme with their views and he'll stand up against some of the agenda that they want to push. Right. Right. Uh, old white men, basically. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> so, <laughs> it says Senate Republicans. Go ahead. I'm sorry. You read. I'm so used to reading. You read. Senate Republicans joined by Democratic Senator Joe Manchin. Uh, West Virginia blocked legislation on Wednesday intended to enshrine abortion protections into law ahead of a possible ruling this summer by a conservative majority Supreme Court striking down the Roe v. Wade decision. Right. So for all this time, since 1973 until now, they never felt compelled to make a standard law on it because there was a precedent set in the court, right? Mm-hmm. So with Esau's system, you can take the laws to court and so on, and, you know, they basically uh, interpret the Constitution, mm-hmm. all right? I'm giving you a very shorthand of it. If you remember from your uh, history classes and things like that, that's 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 a very shorthand version of it, right? Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, legislators make laws, and then the Supreme Court, based on... Uh, the Constitution will interpret the Constitution to see whether it's legal, right? Mm-hmm. So again, just telling you how how weak that whole. That's why God says seek your your His righteousness and not your own righteousness, because right. you know they say that you know the Constitution at the time it was written, they're trying to decipher or discern what was the mind of the people who wrote it mm-hmm. when modern things come up, right? right. Hey, okay. Dick, GOP is great party grand old party that's what it stands for that's the republican party the grand old party the good old boys the good old boys that's exactly (laughs) what that's going into that's exactly what that's going Alrighty, go ahead read on (laughs) democrats fell more than 10 votes short of advancing the legislation touted as a way to codify roe versus wade which guarantees the right to an abortion into law it needed 60 votes to move forward right so they said listen now that this opinion got leaked We need to run out and try to frame mischief by law, Mm -hmm. right, and put this thing in place so that uh, it doesn't matter what the ruling is in the Supreme Court because we'll make it law at this point, right? Mm -hmm. Come on. Democrat, er, the outcome which was expected is likely to ramp up emotions after a leaked draft decision last week showed the Supreme Court was ready to take the historic step of overturning its landmark 1973 decision on abortion rights. Democrats have warned that decision would rip away what has been a right for millions of people for nearly half a century, with the negative effects disproportionately falling on the poor. Today's vote is one of the most consequential we will take in decades because of because for the first time in 50 years, a conservative majority, an extreme majority on the Supreme Court is on the brink of declaring that women do not have freedom over their own bodies. One of the longest steps back in the court's entire history, a decision if enacted will go down as one of the worst court decisions ever. The name of this decision will live in infamy. Senator 
or Senate Majority Leader Charles Schumer, D. New York. Said. Yeah, so he's a Democrat in New York. What were you going to say? Officer? So is this pretty much Isaiah 5 where it says uh, they hate those that say evil's good and uh, good evil? Yeah, you can use that as an example for because sure. Because they're saying like, oh, this is going to be the worst. Like, we don't have a, Yeah, let's read that. Let's read that real quick. We don't have opinions That's exactly no what that is. Bring it out. This is the worst decision ever. Oh, my God. The book of uh, <laughs> Isaiah, chapter 5 and verse 20. Bring it out. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, mm -hmm. that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. All right. It said... It said, if a decision, if a decision, if enacted, will go down as one of the worst court decisions ever. The name of this decision will live in infamy. Mm. Ooh, mm. let that thing pass. They, so they're calling, they're calling evil good, right? Right, mm -hmm. and good evil right, because right. this would be a good decision, mm. right? Based on what we uh, believe on, what we are man. You know how many Israelite babies' lives will be saved by something like this? Right. Many. Many. Do you know how many Bring Israelite out? babies' lives will be saved by something like this? Hey, it's it a, might, a... it might actually, because I'm gonna get to the point about choice. It might actually make them start making some better choices. I was gonna say <laughs> it said right there is gonna the decision. Where is that? It would affect the poor. Up, up the 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 one above the uh, up right there, with negative effects disproportionately Dispro falling on, on the, the poor. poor. Who are the poor? Where are the right, poor? Right, right. So, the poor's talking about Israel. <laughs> yeah, just start making some better choices. You can't afford having gonna, all these kids. It's right. going to make the, the black woman be like, nah, you know what? Let Get me stop married open. so yep. you can afford the children, right. be able to take care of the children. Right. Yeah. Go ahead. Scroll down. Scroll down. Let me see. Do we want to read the rest of that? No, 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 no. No, we don't need to hear all that rhetoric. Uh, keep going. Elect more MAGA rep, uh, Republicans. Uh, hold on. Hold on. You're moving too fast. I don't Go ahead, keep going, keep going. <coughs> yeah, okay, all right. So, this is what's going on. Now, pull up the piece with uh, the little picture I sent you. Uh, so, no, that's not it. It has nothing to do with this. The, the, with the, with the Supreme Court judge. Yes, that, thank you. So, that's uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. I think she died, right? She died recently. That's how they uh, put somebody else in the is that Jake in the court. No, she's uh, she. I think she was the first woman on the Supreme Court. Mm. They they t they teach you about her in school too. She was like the first woman on the Supreme Court, oh, wow. and she was a liberal. Mm. So when she came off the court, I think she I think she passed, and uh, she was trying to stay on until Trump was out of office, mm -hmm. uh, because she knew that he would put somebody conservative in, and then things like. Roe versus Wade would be overturned. <laughs> so, so I believe, I believe, I believe she died, and then this is when he got to put two judges in during his term. Mm. All right. So they, say, you know, like when you in politics, they say that's probably one of the, the the highest powers, other than commander in chief of the military, that the president of the United States has is that he can select who goes on the Supreme Court, which then sways the opinion of all these laws that get brought up there. Let me tell you, just what a freaking unjust crooked system no, no, the whole no, thing is no you know checks and balances. right and it's funny because you'll hear the argument and they'll say yeah you know uh america's democracy is not perfect but it's better than a lot of places in the world and you know it's admirable because what else is there the bible uh, <laughs> <laughs> this <laughs> this right <laughs> Because this is going to be our constitution in the kingdom of heaven. That's right. This is how we're going to govern the people. And that proves they don't believe in the Bible then. Is right? that, uh, is it in Deuteronomy 4 which says, this is your wisdom in the sight of the nations? Yes, sir. Right? That's, listen, they're not, they don't say that we're wise and understanding people now. No. They're going to say that when we're using this to govern mm. the whole earth. That's when they're going to say this is a wise and understanding right. people. Right. You're not going to have this nonsense and this type of stuff. So. She, this was her, uh, I don't know when she said this, but I guess they asked her about it. Because it's a constant thing that they always talk about, abortion rights, abortion rights, ever right. since this whole decision. It's a constant thing. And it says, the, the, the decision, look how big, look how big they put it. <laughs> they did this because she's, she was like the poster child for this. And look at how they put it in bold, different writing, mm -hmm. right? The decision, the decision. This goes into that pro-choice. 
right? They don't want to say that they're uh, uh, pro-abortion, right? Mm-hmm. And notice that the ones that are against abortion, they call them pro-life. Right. So then what's the opposite of pro-life? Death. Pro-death. Right. So these people are pro-death. But anyway, they say <laughs> the decision whether or not to bear a child is central to a woman's life. This is very true. Mm. That decision, whether or not to bear a child, is very central to a woman's life. Can we pull up the, the Planned Parenthood folder? Let's look at the other side of that real quick, the little pamphlet real mm-hmm. quick. Come on, man. You, you guys are slow, man. You guys are slow. There we go. It says... Uh, is it an abortion? Birth, birth, no, I don't want that. It says oh. birth control can help you plan your children so that you can have the number of babies okay. you want and have them at times when you and your husband mm. are well and able to take care of them. There's a lot to consider. Right. There's a lot to consider. That that decision whether or not to bear children between a husband and wife, because mm-hmm. there's a lot wrong with this whole pro-choice uh, thing and this whole abortion thing. Right. Because it opens the door to all types of evilness, like... Children should be born between a husband and wife. Mm-hmm. Damn. No more casual sex. Your decision needs to start with that. Right. And he says, uh, <laughs> birth control means the use of medically approved methods to postpone pregnancy until you're ready for it. Right? So, uh, there's... I don't want to say controversy. There's, I'm not going to get into that uh, to the extent where, you know, I know there's some couples in Israel that... They, they don't want to deal with birth control. They have their beliefs on that. There's there's no law that we can pull to say whether or not you should or shouldn't do birth control. Mm-hmm. All right? That's all I'm going to say. Okay? That's all I'm going to say. Uh, between a husband and wife. Okay? Uh, there was birth right. control in the Bible. Right? You saw the, the example of when uh, this brother had to raise up seed. To, Judah. To his brother. Mm. And, Judah! And, and, and he did the, you know, the pull-out method. <laughs> All right? Let's you know. Call it who it is. Th- th- there's, it, there's no, there's no, yeah, it was Judah. There's no, there's n- there's nothing that we can pull out in the scriptures that <laughs> Come tells you on, man. not to have birth control. You just, uh, just like anything else, consi- just like we can't say the vaccine is against the commandments. Right, right. Right? Same type of thing. That's all I'm going to say with that because there's a lot of opinions about this. That's not what this show is about tonight. We're talking about abortion. Abortion. Can I get? Okay. Can I get a script? Yeah, go ahead. Get Deuteronomy thirty and twenty, thirty and nineteen. So we're talking about abortion. It says, is it a, is it an abortion? Definitely not. An abortion requires an operation. It kills the life of a baby after it has begun. Go to read the book of Deuteronomy, chapter thirty, verse twenty. Nineteen. Read it verse out. nineteen. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. So heaven and earth. We have witnesses in heaven, witnesses in earth. Read. That I have set before you life and death. You have life and death. This is the same thing. The choice that they're talking about is life and death. Give life and allow life to be brought into this earth or kill it and, and you're bringing forth death. Read. Blessing and cursing. Having a child is a blessing, especially if it's done in the right manner. Bringing you're bringing life into this earth. Read. Therefore, choose life. It's a curse to it's a curse to be able to uh, be in a position where you're taking life away, and now it's affecting families. It's affecting the community. It says what? Therefore, choose life. So, because you have life and death in front of you, choose life. Life is the choice that we should choose. Thus saith the Lord. That both. Thou and thy seed may live. That what? That both thou and thy seed may live. It's up to the parents to choose life. But it says the parents' choice is going to be for both them and their children. So both you and your seed may live. Choose life. Right. So go back to the graphic with uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. So it says the decision whether or not to bear a child is central to a woman's life. It is. Mm Mm-hmm. Not the way they're saying it. We'll read on. Come on. Mm. It is a true. Where are we at? To her well living and dignity. To her well being. Oh, well being and dignity. Oh, to her well being and dignity. Okay, I'm going to come back to that. Come on. It is a decision she must make for herself. It sure is. Come on. When government controls that decision for her, she is being treated less. 
than a fully adult human. Come on. Responsible for her own choices. So, this was written <laughs> in a manner to support and justify the right for a woman to murder her babies. All right? Correct. In America, under under the laws that are here with Roe versus Wade. Can I ask a question? Uh-huh. Because it says that the decision for her, she is being treated less than a fully fully adult human responsible for her own choice. If you made a choice to have a child uh -huh. or have sex, wouldn't you be responsible to allow that child to be birthed? Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. But I'm going to read this a little different. And I want you to just think of when, at what point in the process, should have that decision been made? Mm. Mm -hmm. So, read it from the top again. The, de <laughs> the decision whether or not to bury a child is, control is, central. is central to a woman's life. Right. The decision whether or not to bear a child is central to a woman's life. Why? Because to bear a child means you need to be married. Mm. It should be between husband and wife. Right. Not, not Pookie and Ray Ray that you just going to lay down with. After the club. Yeah, after the club, and just here, just just throw some seed up in me, mm. you know. And listen, we understand again things like condoms. It it implies, uh, and it opens up the doorways to promiscuity. Mm. All right, which meaning you know who are mongering around and things like that. In New York, right? Just thinking about New York. <laughs> think about the New York condoms now, right? Hey, if you look it up, they 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 had them when the, when the condoms came out. You'll even see a picture of it. All right. So it goes into things like promiscuity. It is a big decision because, and it's central to a woman's life because you shouldn't be laying down with somebody that's not your husband. That's right. And some of these sisters will then do it, right? And, and it, let me show you how broken it is the way the world sets it up. I'm not saying, I'm not condoning this by any measure, but then they won't even use condoms mm. with somebody that they don't even know if they're going to marry. That they don't even know if they're gonna marry, is that a responsible adult? Is that a is that a responsible adult decision? Mm. Hey, so within that first sentence, they already cut themselves. Yes. Mm. So when I saw this, man, I got pissed off because I said they trying to say the decision to murder your baby is one with all this. They're like, oh look, she worded this so great. Her dignity, her well being. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Your dignity and well being is the choice you make before you do that. Your dignity was lost when you slept with a man that you didn't want to bring a child on this earth with. Right. Or that you didn't even have an intention to marry. How about we take it further back right. and fix all the issues that's broken with us? Mm. That you, in that moment that you laid down with that man, you didn't know if you were going to marry him or not. Right. And then not only did you lay with him, and then you laid with him and just raw dog like we, like mm. we used to say. It's been a minute. Ain't no condom. Here, just get up in me. Mm. Knowing that the byproduct or actually, I won't even say byproduct. The intention, the main intention mm -hmm. of sex is reproduction, to be right. fruitful and multiply. Right, it's the purpose. But here, here, let me, here, yeah, okay. Oh, no condom, no big deal. Go ahead, get up in me. Mm. Well, a little, a little drop could come out and make something happen. Right. The Lord w will choose. That, that's something right. that you always right. say. It's not up to us. Right. It's up to the most high whether he wants to or not. And it says, and it's central to a woman's life, to her well-being and dignity. We're going to talk about that dignity in, in a moment. <laughs> it says, it is a decision she must make for herself. Mm. You're damn right. <laughs> and then you made that errant decision. And now, because America says it's okay. To murder your. To murder your baby. Oh, I, her I didn't want to have a baby, but I wanted to have sex. Mm-hmm. And it says, so when government controls that decision for her, no, they don't control that. What the government told you to lay down with Pookie? Mm. The government told you to go ahead and 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 not consider that this person would potentially be a husband to you. Mm -hmm. It says she is being treated less than a fully adult. No, you treated yourself less than a fully adult human mm -hmm. when you went that route. Let me get uh responsible Deuteronomy for own choice twenty three seventeen. That's lovers of God pleasures more than me. lovers of God. And then I want the Webster definition of whore. Deuteronomy 23. Responsible for 23, her own choices. 17. The book of Deuteronomy. <laughs> I was in Leviticus. That's funny. Uh, Deuteronomy 23, verse 17. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. Right? 
No whore. No whore. You want to talk about dignity? The opposite of dignity is a whore. Right. Mm. So look at the first definition for whore. Read that. Whore. The Merriam-Webster Dictionary. Somewhat old-fashioned. So they're saying that the, the straight literal definition from back in the day, come on. A person who engages in sexual intercourse for pay. Prostitute. Mm. Okay. All right. That's that's straight that way. But let's read the second one. Offensive. A promiscuous or immoral woman. Oh. God means that. Immoral. Yeah, mm. Your morals come from the scriptures. Mm. <laughs> a, a child should be conceived between a husband and wife. And when you open up your legs to have sex, when you make that decision to lie down with somebody who you're not even considering to be your husband, mm. The results of that, uh, well, other than an STD, there's two things that come from that. There's two things that come from that. An STD, mm. right? You're going to get a sexually transmitted disease, or you're going to get a baby out of it. Right. Mm. Or both. That's true. That or is, both. That is true. With somebody that's not your husband. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, we don't got to use a condom. No big deal. Yeah, I don't like condoms. And not that I'm condoning that, but to show you that how twisted even that Logic is based on the world says how they set that shit up. Part of my language, right? Go <laughs> uh, hick promiscuous. Let's say what promiscuous is. Says you that, that your dignity is that you shouldn't be doing that. Bring it out. Read that. Promiscuous, having or involving many sexual partners, no, not restricted to one sexual partner or few sexual partners. Read the third the hell one. Is this? That, <laughs> do you know Willow? Willow Smith? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what she falls under. Come on. No, uh, number three, casual. Casual. Wow. Casual, meaning there's no dignity in the choice. That, can we look up dignity? Look up dignity. That's when your decision is made, not after the fact. The Bible says thou shalt not murder. Mm. Uh, okay, put, read the second one. Dignity, number two, the quality or state of being worthy. Honored or esteemed. What about Google? What does Google say about dignity? What does Google say about dignity? Okay. I like that one. Read that one. The state or quality of being worthy of honor or respect. Right. So now, go back to what Ruth Bader Ginsburg wrote. Gosh, you guys are so... The, e the email. Uh, yeah, that's sorry, what that. I want. Yes. The decision whether or not to bear a child is central to a woman's life. Mm -hmm. Your dignity, your honor, your respect that you have. As a woman. As a woman counts on that. It, it, it relies on that. It's central to a woman's life. Because before you decide to bear a child, you have to decide, based on what the Bible says, is this a man that I am going to be married with? Right. Does he meet the characteristics of a godly man in the scriptures? Mm -hmm. Does he meet the characteristics of a man that would be a good provider? Does he meet the, all the characteristics that would make a compatible match? Mm. And it says, if not, your well-being and your dignity is at stake. Not because you got pregnant and then decided that, oh my God, I don't want to have this guy's baby. Mm. I'm not trying to have a kid right now. Mm-hmm. Pookie was, I'm not trying to have Pookie's baby. I got to see Ray Ray next week. Right. These are all thoughts that come after you've already made that decision. Yeah. After you've made that decision to open your legs. Right. To allow somebody in there that's not your husband. Mm. Your dignity comes before you even have the act. Mm -hmm. That's when the decision is made. It says, it's a decision she must make for herself. You're damn skippy. <laughs> because it's not It's not like you, you trip and fall on the rod. Mm-hmm. So it says, when government controls that, no, the government does not control that decision. Right. That decision where your dignity, where you show that you're a responsible adult for your own choices, a fully adult human, mm -hmm. that happens beforehand. Go back to the pamphlet, because even because maybe the Bible don't not enough for some people. <laughs> Ways to plan your children, right? So. <laughs> Go ahead. Birth, birth control can help you plan your children. So that Listen to the white man. Come so, on. So that you can have the number of babies you want. 
and have them at times when you and your husband. No, when you and Pookie. You and your husband. When you and Ray Ray. Your husband. When you and the dude you just met at the club, your, Pancho. <laughs> your husband. When you and your coworker. Your husband. When you and your husband, come on. Are well and able to take care of them. Go back to Ruth Bader Ginsburg drawing. <laughs> come on. The decision whether or not to bear a child is central to a woman's life. To her well-being and dignity. Go back to the definition of dignity. You're asking too much for IT right Come now. Come on, man. <laughs> See, they they're like, ah, ah, <laughs> telegram. <laughs> oh, you guys are messing up the damn flow. Person one, person one, oh, person one, right there is Shia. Man, is you Shia. just messed the whole it's thing. It's Shia up. right there. You guys suck. Uh, oh my gosh. I told you, you guys. Uh, history, history. <laughs> Come on, recently man. closed right there. There you go. Oh my god. Yeah, just end up, the just, last one. Yeah. yeah, there you go. I'm just gonna end the show now. And we thought we say shalom, go. brothers <laughs> and sisters. It was a good show. We didn't get to the video. Okay. But with that we say Leave it ready because you done messed it up. <laughs> Let's go back to Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Malfunction. <laughs> Read, please. The decision whether or not to bear a child is central to a woman's life, <laughs> to her well-being and dignity. Notice that, man, it's, it's, it's crazy how in that order that was set up. We just established, mm -hmm. right? We know biblically what the, what the responsibilities are. And even Esau knows in their damn pamphlet mm. that the decision to bear a child is between a husband and wife. Right. And then it says, it's central to a woman's life for her well-being and dignity. Get the definition of dignity? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> dignity. No, I don't you want, want that the, one. I want the, want the Google one. one. The Give last, me the Google one. The last uh, tab you have. All the way up. There you go. Dignity. The state or quality of being worthy of honor or respect. Where was your honor or respect, sister, mm. when you laid down with a man that was not your husband? Right. That you didn't even know if was going to be your husband. Right. Knowing what the results of that. Let me tell you something. A lot of brothers and sisters, even brothers too. I, I don't know how many times I'll have this discussion when somebody says they're ready to prove. And I haven't done it lately. But one of my questions that I ask them is, okay, uh, are you ready to have children? I'm sorry, when they're about to be betrothed, are you ready to have children? Mm -hmm. Yeah, someday. What happens if the Most High says right. you're pregnant chamber. in the wedding chamber? Right. Oh, I wasn't thinking about that. Because you got this whole life planned out in your head of, oh, before we have children, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, we're going to mm -hmm. do this, that, and the mm -hmm. other. Right. Right. And I know that there's birth control and things like that, but if God <clears throat> wants you to have a baby, the birth control ain't going to work. Mm -hmm. Right. So, uh, again, going into the mindset of where are we thinking when we think about these things? Mm -hmm. When you say you want a spouse, you're saying that, I understand the potential for me to have a child. And that's something that can very realistically happen the night you consummate that marriage. Mm -hmm. So the dignity is making sure that those the, the, your decision should have been made. It's laughable when they say you're taking away our choice. Mm -hmm. Your choice is made. And if you want to go by Esau standards, you have a choice to use a condom. Right. Oh, well, a condom could break. Then don't do it. Right. It's like the stuff that they come up with is, is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you're telling me if I get raped or, or it's an incest, uh, an incestual rape, that I got to have this baby? Listen, the millions upon millions of abortion that are happening, the vast majority of them are not people who got raped no. and, right. and, and, and had uh, a, a, having a baby by incest. But right. they use Get that, out of here with they that. They use that excuse. That's that philosophy BS. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They use that Let me pose uh, something that may seem like a conundrum to you that 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 will shake your morals. Mm -hmm. Deflection. Come on, man, get out of here with that stuff. So where was your dis where was your dignity then? Mm. When you had that choice, and like you said, now none of those things come up until after the fact. Right. Now afterwards is when you say, "Oh man, I need an out." Mm. That's when your decision is made. Read this in Deuteronomy again. That's the dignity. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 23 and verse 17. Bring there out. shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel. Right, no whore. And that don't mean that you're just selling it for money. We read that it says someone who is promiscuous, casual, mm -hmm. multiple partners. Hey, mm -hmm. it could be one partner. 
And if you didn't do it planning for marriage, that's what makes you run away from that type of stuff. I don't want a baby. You should not be having uh, sexual relations if it's not in the construct of understanding the commitment that comes with that. Right. And let me tell you something. That goes for men and women alike. That's something else that laws will when I do that class. I'm going to bring that out. I'm, I'm going to bring that. You know what? Let me get this in Genesis real quick. I'm going to plant that seed in your head for when I do that class. Bring it out. Hold on. And then I got one in uh, Ciroc yeah, too. Yeah. And then we got like five minutes so we can ra- we can wrap it up. But I'm going to plant that seed. I'm going to drop gonna, that for when that time comes. You don't want to end with the, with the fire Oh, yeah. Video? We're going to do the video. We're going to do the video. So yeah, we'll do this. Man. We'll do your scripture and then we'll do the video with the stupidness that we saw. Uh, <laughs> hold on. Uh, uh, start at... 18. Genesis 2, 18. The book of Genesis, chapter 2 and verse 18. Bring it out. And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him an helpmeet for him. God said, man, you know what? I, I, I created man, and he needs a companion. Mm-hmm. So then he said, let me get to creating some stuff. Come on. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. Come on. And Adam gave names to the to all cattle, and to the fowl of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found, and help me for him. So God said, I made all this creation, right, with the intention of it accompanying Adam, right? Mm-hmm. So he said, I know that I made, and then he said, but you know what? <laughs> A dog is not a companion. Right. A cow is not a companion. I, I imagine he had like, like he was a like He-Man and he had like the tiger with him and stuff. You right. know what I'm saying? Like right. not just, the why, mam- have a, the why have a dog if you can have a tiger? The right. mammoth. You know? the, 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 the b- right. All of that stuff. Enoch. And he said, that's not the type of companionship that I want for him. There's something deeper mm-hmm. that man needs to have a connection to. Come mm-hmm. on. Verse 21. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. So when he said he couldn't find anyone that was help meet for him, Mm -hmm. that's the same mentality we should have in picking a mate. We shouldn't be so casual. If God put so much emphasis that he said, I have to take from you to make somebody worthy for you, then why are we as men and women mm. cheapening ourselves when we make a decision when it comes to marriage? That's heavy. Bombs. That's we don't we don't we talk about and brothers too. We talk about we gods. Yeah. God's mentality was that it, there was nothing worthy in all that he created, even of the other people mm. that was fit to be a companion for Adam. So he said, I got to go up in you and pull something from you. And that's the only way. The emphasis that we need to have on that, and not because she got a big butt and a smile. Mm. Right. Not because she has a certain look. Yes, I understand that that's what triggers (laughs) an attraction. Mm -hmm. But then the emphasis stays on that. And we push a relationship and we push a marriage. Or we're rushing to a back door based on that. That's not godlike. Right. So if our father, the creator of all things, put so much emphasis that he had to pull a companion from within ourselves, then that's the type of mindset we need to be having when we look for a partner. Mm. And that goes on both ends. And that means a woman was never supposed to be touched prior to her husband, and a man was not supposed to be sleeping around prior to his wife. Right. That's heavy. I know we're not, because I don't want to... No, but I know. I, I got a whole class yeah. I want to build around that thing. I was but it starts with that thought. But Leviticus, it starts with that thought. In Leviticus, it talks, about, uh, it talks about how the priests had a certain... There was laws on what women they could lay with, their yeah. seed, and she how She had to be a virgin. She couldn't yep. be a whore. No. She, she, she had to be a whore. virgin. No. She had to yeah. be, no. So that's heavy. Yep. Yeah. I mean, obviously, it's different now. Right, it's not like you're gonna find virgins like that. You right. know, now we're raising up our daughters and our sons differently, right, so right. we can bring that back into the earth that way. Mm-hmm. Right? Uh, unfortunately, you know, now we gotta live with the fact that you know your partner might have been with 
All things a are few. new in Christ. Mm-hmm. All things are new in Christ. Or a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hell no. Or a lot. Well, well, the the spirit is new. The the box ain't new. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, we got hope, right? <laughs> <laughs> the box the, the box ain't new. What other scripture are we gonna bring out? I'm yeah. not gonna go with. Like yeah. I said, that's that's a class that's in my spirit that I gotta start building on. Bring to it do. out. Get it's some, gonna be the yeah. next Sabbath class. It, go, it goes into the God. I don't know. The next evening. They be waiting. For the last minute to tell me if I'm gonna teach on the Sabbath, it's gonna be the next and then I gotta scramble course. to put. I wish they would give me a little more notice. Sirach <laughs> 26 <laughs> and uh, 22. Sirach 26, hey, 22. Really, even with the notice you get, all the uh, classes so far, thus far, have been fire. That humility class is a all most praise, All praises to the Most High. All praises to the Most High. 26 and what? 22. Time? The book is Sirach chapter 26. Verse 22. And harlot. And harlot is the same thing as a whore. And harlot, read. Shall be counted as spittle. Shall be accounted as spittle. As com- a harlot or a whore is compared to spittle. The spit that comes out of our mouth is worthless. Read. But a married woman is a tower against death to her husband. But there's value. There's dignity in marriage. There's dignity in a married woman because she's a tower against death to her husband. And as gods, we're talking about being gods. As men, we have the power and the ability to make a harlot or to make a married woman. Mm. Hey, and that's up. heavy. That's another piece, too, that we got to think about. Uh, a man can build up a woman or he can break her down. Right. And and there's so much as gods, like you said, that, that, that can be given to build that up. That's like in Ephesians where it talks about... Uh, you, you you present it to present yourself to mm-hmm. without spot, a glorious church. Right. It, it, a lot of that, I mean, a lot. Of, let me tell you, men as gods on the earth that, that do die like men, you're not impotent. And I'm not talking about sexually. I'm talking about the power and authority that you have. You're not impotent when your wife's the damn devil. You have an authority. You have a spiritual authority, a power through, through God. Remember, we were reading about the power thereof in this Bible. <laughs> To alter that woman. Mm. And it starts from when you choose. Mm. It starts from when you choose, which is why the significance of choosing is so important. And that only helps you but so much choosing right. Because there will be trouble in the flesh. Right. But it amazes me how you have brothers that will come and be like, oh, she's just a damn devil. And... Come on, bro. Listen, uh, are there cases where, where it's like that? Yeah, but you have power. You're not impotent in your authority to be able to bring forth something good out of a woman if you build up correctly, if you do right. And sisters, likewise, just need to be able to be in subjection to receive. That's part of the subjection. Mm-hmm. It's not just, oh, yes, Lord, no, Lord, let me do what he wants. Yes, be in subjection in all things. Mm-hmm. But it also means being ready to receive that instruction, being able to receive that guidance. Correct. Understanding that it's to build you up. Right. Mm-hmm. Understand that it's to build you up. Um, anyway, let's watch that video because this thing is hilarious dealing with the abortion. And then we're going to wrap it up. It's like three Read minutes. You right? This poster that I have, um, because I hear a lot of pro lifers um, say that life begins at conception. It does. Mm-hmm. So my poster reads. Life begins when you understand living women matter more than potential babies. Stop. You heard her? She said living women matter more than potential babies. Mm-mm-mm. Evil as hell. Saying that the, the, the child in your womb doesn't matter more than what I want to do. Lovers of yourself more than lovers of God. Right. Heady, high-minded, mm. evil. Man, oh man. Come on. What is it? What do you mean? If it's a potential baby, what is inside of a woman? It's a fetus. Is it living? No. How can it grow if it's not living? Actually, actually, that's like saying if an acorn is a tree. When does the fetus become living? Um, that's actually a good question, but that line... Yeah, of course, because you don't know it, because... Oh, oh. <laughs> stop, stop. She said, she said, oh, <laughs> because oh, we just fed, we just fed whatever. Right. She said, she said, when does a fetus become livid? Uh, if you were so into your abortion law, according to, according to the government, it's after 23 weeks. Mm. But go ahead. Mm. It's living. You, you, you actively, you actively deny science. 
now. How am I denying? Wait, what science did I deny, Barbie? Um, okay, so let's look at some posters over here. But you don't have to be I here. I need you to tell me what science, you just made an accusation that I denied science. What science did I deny? That it's a child inside of you. It is a clump of cells when mm. you I'm have a clump of cells. What makes 90 sense? seconds. You were born? You were born. So you, you don't, what you're arguing is that uh, anything that is not born is not valuable of life. Of I right did not life. say that. It's subjective. So when does, it, when does a child or fetus or clump of cells, whatever you want to call it, when does this clump of cells or fetus become living? When it can sustain. 60 well, seconds. Oh, this is a but right when, is the, when is the sustainability? No, when is sustainability? Is she looking back? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, uh. Because, like, what, how do you sustain life? Like, my <laughs> newborns aren't sustainable. You can't just have a newborn and they just, like, live on their own. Stop. Right? Damn, that's right. a heavy cut yeah, when she hit it with that cut. one. Yeah. Because she's talking about when, so, so the fetus is not alive because it needs support. <laughs> She said, my newborn is born, and he's not sustainable. Right. That baby going to die if I don't feed it, I don't change it, I don't wash it, I don't look out for it. Mm -hmm. It ain't, it ain't going to be able to survive. Hey, mm -hmm. for some of these Edomite kids, man, I was, I was at, at the store today. Some of these Edomite Ten kids, seconds. man, they're, they're like, what is this? You're not sustained. Or you're not, you can't sustain your own life till you're like 30 living in your dad's house. Right, God right. So, it. so it's such a stupid argument talking about sustainability. Anyway, uh, go ahead. Uh. They're not sustainable. They need help and assistance to survive. So is a newborn not, is, is a newborn not worthy of life? Uh, is a newborn not worthy of life? I do have one thing to say to Got you. Him. How is it that when my mom was in college 30 years ago, she was protesting the exact same thing that me and these wonderful other women and men on this side have been protesting. Hell How is no. it? Why? Why are we still protesting? Why are we still having to talk about this issue? It is a basic still being a human hope. Right. right to have an abortion, to have a choice. The reason we're still having the question is because some people don't want to accept the natural consequences of heterosexual sex and be inconvenienced by another human life or want to selfishly choose to end human life in order to have their whims met. That's what we read in Second Timothy. Mm. Lovers Second Timothy is three. Lovers of pleasure, Bombs. not lovers of God. Ooh-wee. Mm. She cut her at the end there, boy. She cut her. She cut. She chopped it up. She wasn't ready. No, she was not ready. She was not ready. She said, so why am I still alive if my mom tried to kill me when I was a baby? Mm -hmm. God, mm -hmm. hey. well. Any closing thoughts? The devil is alive. <laughs> we, hey, what, what do you got Saturday? You got the Spanish show? Uh, I'm not sure. I got to go with the officer's car. Come on. I thought it was supposed to alternate. Wasn't it English last week? It should be Spanish this week, dude. Yeah, but it's right. supposed to, it was supposed to be Spanish last week. I wasn't here. Solomon wasn't here. So oh, okay, so it got rescheduled. So it should be it should, it's just, just flip it. Well, <laughs> tune in Saturday to the hour Power Hour or yeah. La Hora de Poder. Right. Exclusively on Facebook <laughs> at the Laws 144K. All right. Mm -hmm. Laws will will be on. Yeah, we'll be on next week. All right. Laws will uh, Wednesday, 7 p.m. Arizona time, 10 p.m. Eastern time. All right. Uh, Maybe we'll go over the Gad stuff. I got a lot of stuff on Gad. Mm. I got a lot of stuff on Gad. We got to bring it out. Yeah, we do. Let's we'll see if we bring it out. Anyway, y'all stay in the spirit. Stay safe. We got New Moon Monday night. All right? That's right. Enjoy the Sabbath coming up. Enjoy the New Moon on Monday night. And with that, we say Shalom. Shalom. shalom.